every Jaeger quest, you're like, why would I do that? Jaeger's like, okay, I've got the job for you. You take needle, you stick in a fingernail, okay? Okay, then you piss on your open wound and then come back to me, take photo. And you're like, wow, you're a really fucking, you're a really Why? dirty bird. I don't get it. You dirt. I have dark desires. I have. <laughs>What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. And I'm Gertie. <laughs> and I'm feeling Gertie. It's actually one of the enemies in The Binding of Isaac. Is uh, Gertie? Gertie, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so referencing the same uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Ah, that's probably where they got the... Binding of Isaac enemy from, yeah? Yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. Everything in Binding of Isaac is all about, like, bodily function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't like bodily functions anymore. I don't like the human body. I've been, like, the, up close and personal with <gasps> my own human body. <sighs> How'd the surgery go? Was it, like, quick and easy, or was it, like, do you have to go so under? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um uh yeah, definitely go under um what they what they effectively do is they like take the top of your stomach and like open up the little flap <laughs> and then like oh. put like some fucking little like it's all laparoscopic. So oh. they, they, there there's six holes and they have like robot arm things that go into your Oh. That's what all my like the I, I sent you a picture yeah, of yeah. like stab wounds everywhere, dude. Like the right stabbing the part two. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's what the stabbing would have looked like if it was the stabbing. Um, and the fucking doctor sitting there with like, you know, VR goggle things. That's you know, looking through so the, wild. Yeah, like, you know, manipulating these little robot arms. And, uh, <clears throat> and they basically like take part of like the stomach, take like the little claw thing and like open up like a bit of that and then like take the stomach and like wrap it through the hole of like its own thing around the esophagus which like props it up and mechanically it literally like mechanically puts pressure on the esophagus yeah. and it like stays closed um prevents you know prevents the stomach acid from coming so up. without any new hardware they're able to use basically engineering to just like twist things around to force it to behave the way it's supposed to behave that's purely pretty, mechan purely mechanical that's yeah. wild that's yeah, super so, interesting and uh, all done via VR yeah, goggles and robots. <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, this was the first time I, I've had surgery a few times and this is the first time I'm always like, <laughs> you know, when they put the oxygen on and they're like, all right, count backwards, you know, and you're like three, you know, five, yeah. four. And I'm like, I'm like ready for the moment. What I want to do is I want to be like, okay, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. And I want to like wake up and be like, I'm awake, you know, have yeah, like completely yeah. unbroken. Um, and this was the first time that they were like wheeling me out from <laughs> like you go in for pre-op and you just get like naked, put on the little gown, sit in bed, sit there with your phone for 20 minutes while you wait. And then they just start wheeling you down. You already have an IV in and, uh, you know, the anesthesiologist guy is like, all right, I'm going to give you something that's going to relax you or whatever. And I remember like going out of the room, like 10 feet turning right and i remember being like yo like let me get some of this stuff to take home with me like and then i'm awake like and it's i don't done. remember i when i had my uh endoscopy a couple weeks before this as like preparation for this whole thing um i like was totally conscious up until you know the like three two and i'm like oh i'm going out you know you know like yeah i was ready until the last moment this one it's all complete. don't even remember I, I, getting wheeled in the room <laughs> i'm like as soon as i realized that i'm like oh my god what did i say like i could have said anything oh. i could have done anything like you oh broke the god. nda and you said when the dark all life was <laughs> oh my god i know i was like yo i'm gonna tell you guys right now you guys head over to the ets <laughs> let me tell you all about it <laughs> yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent picture nikita <laughs> tweeted a picture of me with like the IV in and whatever, and he's like, you know, what am I supposed to do? It's about gone this so guy? far. What am I supposed? Yeah, to this do? has gone way too far. What am I supposed to do? 
And I'm sitting there with a killer helmet lying in bed like, yo, let me tell you, the Chronicles of Rizzi, season four, I know what's going to happen. Bro, imagine. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, otherwise, like, well, I got out of the surgery and uh, uh, honestly, like, haven't been in a ton of pain. Um, the worst part for up until basically today, the worst part has been the diet because it's like, oh, it's like clear liquid diet, which is like nothing with carbonation, nothing with caffeine. <clears throat> I can't even have like you couldn't have yogurt or pudding. That was like too thick. Wow. I could have jello, but it was like living on jello and chicken broth, bro. Like. I, and I'm the least picky person. I was like, that's going to be no fucking yeah. problem. You know, like, and after three days, dude, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, got my wife by the throat. I'm like, let me have some pudding. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> give me the I'm yogurt. losing it. And then, so I also was on, uh, they gave me fucking oxy, liquid oxy. Um, Damn. And yesterday I started to have, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was, um, there's two different causes of like pain. One of which is referred pain because you don't really have like your internal mm. organs don't have like pain receptors. Yeah. Um, your, your like muscles and your bones and stuff do, but like your internal organs don't. So very often the same thing happened when I ruptured my spleen when I was, uh, little, um, which is actually on story time. Uh, <laughs> we haven't talked about yet but um you don't really feel like the injury your your brain is like i need to tell them yeah. otherwise like somehow so usually it's in the shoulder and i'm getting the same exact pain i got when i was 11 years old oh. which is just like it feels like someone's stabbing me in the fucking shoulder dude that's the super worst. interesting so every time I breathe, I get these stabbing pains in both my shoulders. And it's like, it's uh, the weirdest pain. It's like, imagine if the inside of like your muscle was like itchy, but it hurt. It, I don't, I can't describe it. It's just, there's no relief. There's nothing I can do. Um, and then if I hiccup or if I burp, that's when <clears throat> there's like yep. sutures and like wires and whatever holding stuff in place and it's like oh it's just a stabbing that fucking pain is so for like painful a... that's awful dude <sighs> but you know uh, yeah that reminds me it's so weird man my wife had to have surgery while she was pregnant with our second child which was a whole story but she ended up in the days after she felt tons of like super sharp pain in her shoulder like crazy and we ended up going back because we were like what what's going on and they were saying like I don't know, whatever type of surgery it was and where it was, they were like, sometimes there are like little air bubbles that like get left in that basically like it's just like looking for a joint to come out of. And a lot of times if you sit up a lot, it'll just like pop out of your shoulder. And I was like, yep. what the hell? Like, that's so awful. <laughs> like, that's just Yeah, they, they inflate your stomach, thing. your abdomen with yeah. CO2 to help with the laparoscopic surgery yeah. to give more room. And that surgery, like they try to remove most of it, but there's a lot of residual gas that basically fills your diaphragm and it like pools along your shoulders, right? Because it's like buoyant. And that's that's part of the pain in the shoulders is like the, gas is escaping. Yeah, trapped gas. Ugh. So it's Ugh. yeah. And, and then yesterday, yesterday <laughs> it was getting pretty bad. So I took the oxy. But the problem is that like I was just getting. I wasn't eating enough um, because I was so sick of what I was having. Which yeah. Was chicken broth, beef broth, and like Gatorade. Yeah. I'm like, I just need real food. And what my wife ended up getting me some of those like Ensure. Yep. Um, like the meal replacement drinks. Yeah. But dude, there's something in that I that I'm like allergic to. And I don't know what. Oh. Uh, like, first of all, you get like the whey protein, like just coats your mouth. Yeah. It feels like you chugged like white paint. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But also, like, I was, like, itchy throat. My tongue was, like, tingling, like, feeling numb. I'm like, yo, this isn't good. So um, I just wasn't really eating enough. And then I took the Oxy, which is a fucking opioid. And I'm, you know, like, so that made me instantly nauseous because I didn't have a full stomach. Um, and then that's why we had to cancel the podcast on yeah. Thursday a couple nights ago because I'm like, yo, dude, 
I'm like, F I gotta fucking go. Like I had to end the stream. And then yesterday, the same thing happened. I didn't realize that it was the oxy that was making me feel nauseous um, until yesterday when I took the oxy again, and I and felt like, like exactly the same. And then like I was sitting here with the, I have a fan right here just blowing at my face like this on stream, like, oh, uh, you know, like trying to feel better. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> thunder, and everything just goes pew, all black. And I'm like. I'm going to bed. Yeah, screw like, this. I'm not, <laughs> like, fuck this. I'm going to bed. Like, oh. So I just went upstairs and, you know, pull out my phone and my phone's connected to the Wi Fi and the Wi Fi's down. So I like, can't open up Discord to explain to the stream what happened, to yeah. explain to you, like, where I went. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm done. You know, like, I sent the message and just kept hitting reply and was just like lying in bed. Dude, um, brutal. Yeah. So, oof. Overall, I think everything's good. My the, the symptoms, you, yeah. you know, the, the cough and everything. Um, as far as I can tell, you know, fingers crossed, seems to be like infinitely better, if not gone. Yeah. Um, I still the problem is I still have <laughs> because they had to intubate, right? They gave me a yeah. breathing tube. My throat is sore. Yes. And so I'm I am still like having to clear my throat and yeah. cough and stuff, but I don't. It's not the same. Yeah. Because now when I clear my throat, it's like my throat's clear. Yeah, <laughs> at least at least for a couple Whoa. of minutes, you know. Yeah. Um. Whereas before it wasn't, you know, I haven't been able to clear my throat for ten fucking years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, surgery, especially a surgery you have to like go under for and stuff, is just gonna it's just gonna be brutal and take some time. But that's good that it feels feels better and hopefully just getting over the hump of like getting like 75, 80 percent better, being able to get some of the diet back, and then you're just like, okay, I can ride the rest of this out with those first few days. Dude, yesterday That's I literally brutal. called my doctor after after like my power went out. I called I called my doctor and I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna throw up. Like I feel so nauseous, and you do not want to throw up after the no. surgery." Actually, as of a few years ago, like if I had gotten the surgery four years ago, I would not have been able to throw up at all. Like it would have been physically impossible for me to throw up. Now they do kind of a partial Nissen fund application, so you can actually. You can actually throw up if you need to, but it would have been extremely painful because yeah. right? it's all of the sutures and everything. So I'm like, I'm like, I really don't want to throw up, and he really doesn't want me to throw yeah. up because right? that'll fuck up all of his work. And I'm like, I think if I have some of the yogurt or pudding in my refrigerator, so he like accelerated me a week forward in my diet, oh. which has been like, so now I, I do, bro, I had mashed potatoes today, oh. and it was like. I swear to fucking God, the greatest thing I've ever had in my Gordon entire Ramsay life. Gordon Ramsay made those mashed potatoes. Oh my God, you have no idea how good these mashed potatoes were. Like, yeah, this is what my life has come to. That mashed potatoes are the greatest thing yep. on planet Earth, and to be able to have like yogurt and pudding and ice cream, it's like fuck. Like, I, I, I can only imagine, dude. So <clears throat> that's where we're at. That's <laughs> wild. Alive. That is wild. Ugh. Well, hopefully it's. Net positive. Get through the worst of it, and then it'll be... Dude, that's brutal stuff, though. Woof. Yeah. So what have you been up to? I heard uh, Tarkov land. Every, everybody's been like... <coughs> like, there's big stuff happening big in Tarkov. Stuff happening, I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, listen, I, I learn about what happens from Tarkov once a week from Jesse on the podcast. Exactly. Just like all the rest oh, yeah. of you. And this of all weeks, you weren't going to be like, hold on, Doc, let me catch the podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> um. Yeah, so we got a we got a we got a big old dev cast Tarkov TV live, um, and it was uh it was a it was a banger. It was a really good one. They redid their they redid the whole set to look like a like a cultist area. Like uh, it's all painted like red and black, and there was all the cult symbols everywhere. And like they all had like they did juice time out of like these like goblet chalices with like. And he had, he read all the notes from like this big like book. It was like with all these like the cult symbols. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was uh, it was cool. They, and they they love doing that. And at the end, and at the beginning, he was like, "Dude, this is like this is sick." But there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff to go through. Um, it was a really good cast. They showed a new roadmap. They showed video footage of a ton of different features. They talked about a ton of features. They talked about features we're interested in. This felt like a really good. Now, some of the things like uh, we have questions about or uh, I don't know, but like at least it was just really good. This felt like it didn't feel like everybody was just like, well, what are we getting this wipe? It felt like, 
you know, kind of what we had been talking about. Like they're moving the ball towards that's what it felt like. That's what I told chat. They're moving the ball towards releasing the game. I'm not like they're releasing the game next year or whatever. But instead of just being like feeling like we're at the table begging for scraps, like what are we getting this wipe? Like they're kind of coming forward and being like, here's how we're progressing the game. So he talked at first about like the tech patch, the net code patch that they did. And and they said on their end that they, they notice a big difference too. I don't really know what that means, but he said that it was a big stuff. It had a ton of network stuff and they noticed a big difference. I noticed a big difference. Um, they probably have a bunch of analytics. I'm sure. Like, I, I wouldn't even know what they would look at. Like, like I can't conceive thing. because I'm so ignorant to game dev. Like, I, I can believe that they have metrics to determine whether the network patch worked or not, but I can't even conceive of what that would be because my metrics are so skewed by just how I play the game. Like, I experience less desync. That's my metric for success. You know, if you were just, like, looking at it, I'm sure they have... You know, our average RTT, average player ping, stuff like that. But my brain, I'm like, I'm sure they have something. I don't know. Um, uh, they talked about the Unity update, and he was saying that they, they, because that got delayed, we kind of like leapfrogged the patches. He was like, the Unity update isn't like, a, it's not coming out yet. But he was like, we basically had a problem, and we've already resolved that problem with the Unity team. He was like, we're not pushing it right now. We're not pushing it yet. But like we had a problem with the migration. We worked with Unity and we'll get that out to you. We'll get that out eventually. So that was good. And then here, let me actually send this to you so you can kind of pull it up. But they um, they released a new roadmap. They released a new roadmap and the roadmap included... Um, <laughs> the roadmap included two wipes. So <laughs> we're getting a wipe in August and we're getting a wipe in December. And then it's broken up into like all of the features that we're getting with our August wipe and a bunch of features that are going to come either in between the August wipe and the December wipe or with the December wipe. Um, and then some more in progress things that we're getting like along the way, like the new matchmaking system is there at the bottom, which they're currently testing on the ETS. He said that he ended up saying that the Unity 2021 patch is going to come between the August wipe and the December wipe. Um, and there's a lot here. It's like, it's dense. It's a lot of stuff. Basically, what they ended up doing was splitting patch 0.14 into two separate patches. And this August wipe is going to be basically quality of life the wipe top down and the December patch is going to be like new mechanics, new content type of stuff. Does that make sense? And yeah. so there ended up being quite, quite a lot of stuff um, on here. And so like it, you can go to their Twitter and see some of the things. I mean, we can't, we can. So I guess we'll just go through the roadmap a little bit, but basically they talk so what we're getting in the uh, in the August patch is loadout presets. They showed a little video about this, but it wasn't anything in game. It was like a skit. They showed like a little skit video of like guys changing presets, but it wasn't any in game footage. But we're getting loadout presets, and he said something about like it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Um, the randomized loot container spawns, which we still that was the little skit they did in the. April where like the guy went up to dorms and that crate wasn't there. Yeah. We still don't know. They haven't, they didn't talk about it. They didn't say like, are all the containers going to move around? Are some of the containers going to move around? Is the loot inside the containers going to be more dynamic or just the location of, we don't know, but that's coming. They did show, um, <clears throat> they did show, however, the selecting the body part with the hotkey. Um, so let me, it's so hard to show you all of these things, but here I have, I have the technology. Um, <clears throat> so basically what they're doing is, you know how you can, um, hold R and scroll wheel and you can select what mag you want to reload to. That's how they're doing. Like I just sent you a screenshot. 
that's how they're doing the um, limb selection is that you just hold your Salua if you want to. So if you don't want to do it, like if this is too complicated for you, you just heal exactly how you normally heal, right? Just spam heal your Salua. But if you wanted to, just by holding your heal key, you not only get like a breakdown of where everything is so you can see if your head is lower or your thorax is lower or whatever um and then you can just like scroll and select which one you want to heal so i thought that was i hope you, I hope you can also click oh that would be interesting yeah if you just hold three and then clicked on which one you wanted yeah because honestly sometimes like scrolling under pressure yeah depending on how depending on like the uh the sensitivity of the scroll yeah like if you if you have a mouse that doesn't have like the click click yeah click, 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 then it might be a little <laughs> tough. Yeah, um, I think I, I think I'd probably. That would up, be cool if you could. Click. I would rather click personally just because it's yeah. more. Like what I had proposed like five five years ago, yeah. four years ago, was almost like the um, the comms system. How when you double tap oh, Y, yeah. it comes up. So what? what I wanted to do was just like double tap Y and then you'd already, and it was a combination of that. Plus, you know, sometimes, um, this is like a thing that makes a lot of sense too, with like controllers where you'd have like a wheel. And if you like put your mouse like straight up, it like selects the top one. Yeah. And it's almost like you can move your mouse around and it's, it's always going to be the top one. So, the thinking was like you double tap yeah you hold down actually you know double tap four let's say and then you just flick your mouse up oh because you be know like, that's thorax ah that's kind of cool that'd be double a tap to flick up to the right it's my my left shoulder yeah. right like um that would be the fastest way of doing it yeah because there'd be like a little bit of skill in learning where everything is and then just being able to like flick in what direction you want yeah, that's interesting. Clicking would be nice because mm -hmm. I also have my heel bound on my mouse. So holding that and scrolling would be hard because you normally scroll with your uh, index finger. So I'd have to scroll yeah. with my middle finger or you know what I mean? Either way, it's still, in my opinion, progress. I would have liked it. Yeah, that'd be cool. I like the way you did it. But what I like about it is more instances where we get to engage in healing or engage in the systems while keeping our eyes on the screen. That's what I love about this so much is that like, if you can get to cover, you can just hold it and scroll. And if you need to, and if you hear someone or, or see you can like just see if someone's pushing you and then you can just like cancel it out and shoot. You know what I mean? So like, I like that. It just keeps me in. Now they showed footage of it also with like CMS kits, but you know, most people don't keep those bound. You know what I mean? Like most people don't keep splints. Although with a, grizzly that does heavy bleeds light bleeds and heals and fractures like well grizzly you can kind of scroll and like fix oh i've got a i've got a light bleed but i don't want to prioritize that i want to prioritize the fracture of my leg so i can run with a grizzly bound you can kind of do whatever which actually is kind of nice um but uh but they showed that so that was sick there's like some other things that aren't on here toggling the helmet lights. There's actually going to be a bind for that now, but they showed footage of it, man. And it still looks like the flashlight shines straight down to the ground. It's just so bad. Like I watched the footage. And I was like, this is so cool. Why does it suck so much? Like who wants like literally in the video, he like walked up to a door and I don't know if people noticed, but I noticed in order to make the footage look cool, he looked up a little bit and I was like, why? Like you shouldn't have to walk up to a door like this to illuminate the door it should be in your eye your... light that's what i'm saying dude yeah. i shouldn't be illuminating the floor I should be illuminating directly in front of me that's what i want because then i'll look at the ground if i want to look at something on the ground right and because it's at this like weird 45 you kind of got to do this it's super weird i don't know i i would love for them to change that or let us change the angle of it before we go into the raid um but i don't see that happening they're adding something where you can sell everything off your scav to fence in one button. But you can first like transfer anything you want. So they showed a little video of like the dude transferred, you know, some some good ammo and some valuables that he found. And then you can just boom, quick sell. And it's like, do you want to sell everything to fence for this amount of money? Yes. Boom. So 
I think that's cool. That's just like a nice little quality of life thing for scavs. Cause I leave, I leave stuff behind a ton. If I just don't want to deal with putting it in my stash or if I can't fit like a bigger back, like a pilgrim, I don't want to keep a pilgrim, but if I'm a scavenger, I'm going to grab a pilgrim cause I can carry more stuff out like vendoring that. And then somebody and, and fence gives more money now than it used to. Yes. Right? Yeah. Fence so, gives more money. Yeah. And somebody was saying that like, this is actually going to bring a little bit of the like maybe check fence because if somebody accidentally did that, if they didn't take something that they wanted off, you might find good ammo or like better meds or something like that on fence of from people selling stuff that they didn't care about or um, or just like didn't realize that they had left behind. And I was like, you know, I mean, you know, what would be great is if is if fence gave you like a better rate from that screen from that screen yeah so you'd be more motivated to sell yeah. your you know ssap or whatever if you're not going to use it mm -hmm. sell the stuff that you have maybe it's a busted armor you know level class four armor like a rat rig or whatever yep if he gives you a, a much better rate than you would otherwise get like let's say from ragman yep then now once again now like fence has his own economy exactly exactly which i think is kind of cool um <clears throat> so i thought that was kind of sick uh, that was just like a random little thing sidearm quick swap so okay so they they showed this you you can go to their twitter if you want to like see they showed a little video of the the sidearm quick swap it's not quite as fast as i would have wanted it but I guess that kind of makes sense because BSG wouldn't do it super fast. But they do show you a side-by-side -side of the regular, and it definitely does come up faster. You basically get like a little bit of a wiggle as your penalty. Like you pull it up fast and he is, his aim, your aim is like a little bit wiggly. But Which tweet is it? Uh, so just like, um, here, Recoil let me see. Rework. It, it'll be key. it'll be farther down because it's one of the earlier things that they tweeted so it'll be um yeah let's go basically all the way down when you see the one with the helmet it's right above that um but it's pretty cool i once again it's a feature that i've wanted for a really long time and it's definitely quicker than before so i'm not mad about it i hope that this I, I think the wiggle is a little aggressive, but I hope that this brings I, I'm going to I'm going to attempt to like bring pistols as like actual sidearms as a result of this. And he said it's going to be a separate bind and I'm just going to bind that to my like pistol bind. Like I'm just going to make whatever the quick swap is. I'm never going to want to use the regular speed one. Right. You know what I mean? Um, because if it's faster, if you don't need the regular the fast one, then you're OK with the, your aim being a little wiggly because you can still get it accurate before so it ends up working so it's a little bit faster it's not as quick as like right now if you get a malfunction you can deploy your pistol really really fast so it's like somewhere in between i wanted almost that speed just like permanently but once again it seems reasonable yeah it doesn't seem it doesn't seem bad it seems like it, it doesn't look that fast until you see the side by side and you see like how how much quicker he can get his pistol kind of like on target so I I am okay with this. I like this. Um so what else are we getting at this one? So sidearm quick swap. The mother flipping upgraded trader UI. I know we've seen this before. They did another little video. We didn't really see anything new or different compared to the last time. I just like I I lay awake at night dreaming about this. I'm so excited. And I know we talked about before, it's not the most elegant thing. It's not the most glorious solution, but just like having all the traders up there and being able to swap between who you want to buy and sell, swap between your quests, just look at everything at a glance. Oh my that, God. Did they also tweet that recently uh, or no? They didn't tweet that recently, but I can, I can send you a screenshot. I'm literally like looking at it right now. Um, I like vaguely recall. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like, it's definitely not the most elegant solution. And if for some reason to me, the the guy up in the top right still looks like an N64 GoldenEye character for some reason. <laughs> oh, like there's God. like 14 yeah. total polygons. But um, 
I well, it, what it is is that there's no texture. Everything in yeah. Tarkov has like mega mega like, textures grime and like you, you can see all the fibers on the gloves and everything and then this is like perfectly smooth yep like rubberized gi joe looking motherfucker exactly. in the upper right hand corner <laughs> exactly but like it's not a complete overwork of the ui it's not like a huge thing but it it's 90 it's 95 percent as good as a complete ui overhaul and that's fine to me. The ability to just like up in the top right, stay on the sell screen and just swap between who I want to sell to or stay on the buy screen, swap between who I want to buy to. They added a, um, they added a, a key bind for like confirm. Like you put a bunch of things, you just hit space bar and it does the sale for you. That's going to be helpful. The fact that you can just go to tasks and then toggle between all the different things and have actually look at your tasks all like in a row and see who's got them. So this is like one of the biggest things for me is being able to, um, the, the upgraded trading UI, muy, muy, muy bueno, muy, muy bueno. Um, I'm trying to add an eraser right next to the sell button. Yes, so that's if uh, if you had a bunch of things you wanted to sell and you wanted to cancel them out, you could click that and it puts it all back in your stash. Because normally you would just hit escape and back out and go to a different trader, but because all the traders are up there, that's like a way to clear the thing. I, I don't necessarily see it being used super often, often, but... Oh yeah, wait a minute. So is this going to sell it to all of them or what? How does that work? Like, what do you mean? Who, who is it selling it to? Oh, in this picture, it's Skier. You see how his name is like white or his thing box is white. Hmm. So you like select the trader and sell your thing, select your other trader, sell your thing, select your other trader. I guess this could provide situations where you thought you had clicked Peacekeeper and hadn't and you sold your thing and you sold it to like the wrong person. But largely, there's not a yeah, whole lot think? of overlap. I guess there is with like gun stuff to like Peacekeeper or Mechanic. But do you think like, so if you put like five things here, and then don't do anything and then click on mechanic. Is it going to be like, are you sure you want to switch to mechanic? You have unsold items. I don't know. Or, my, or do you, my guess is that it'll just auto clear and put everything back in your stash. That would be my guess. But that is an interesting question. Yeah. These are like the fucking, the edge cases. That yeah. Like, I, I wonder, I, I, I feel like they've never got that far. Yeah. But, could be could be but i don't know um but i i'm i'm still super i just think that oh my god just hundreds of thousands of clicks hundreds of thousands of clicks of needless clicks will be saved as a result of the new ui i'm very excited about it um then they said just like more quality of life features oh that's like the next thing it just says new quality of life features oh brother this is all kind of disjointed. I'm trying to go through it, not necessarily in the order that they talked about it because they kind of jumped around, but I'm trying to go like, what's in this patch and then what's going to be the next patch? He ended up saying later that in this patch, in the August patch, they are removing the sharpening effect of painkillers. <laughs> Finally. Wow. Finally, he said they're going to wow. replace it with like a desaturation effect where the colors will get muted a little bit. Oh, that's so much better, dude. So much better. I, dude, I literally started like applauding. I like stood up and started applauding. It only took him six years. I'm so, I'm so happy about that, bro. I'm so happy about that. So they're taking... Just, just, just be aware, though, that like people are going to be like, oh, now it, they're going to get rid of the pixelation. 98% of the pixelation is because yeah you're watching it on uh, Twitch the video compression yeah. that has nothing to do with the painkiller <laughs> effect the painkiller effect makes it a little bit worse but yeah. like it's not going to go away no not if you're watching but playing i had somebody be like i wish i like it i wish i wish the game was like that all the time i was like brother you have a sharpness setting just crank that bad boy up like the rest of us hate it you know what i mean um so that's super exciting we are getting the first or the second iteration the first expansion of streets and this is wild we are getting a f the ex first expansion of streets in august and then we're getting another expansion in december 
So I don't know if that's because the expansion they had the the expansion they had originally planned they had to cut in half because they didn't have enough time, or if that just means they're ahead of schedule and they're actually like crushing out these expansions because that'll be the quickest we've ever gotten. Like, or they cut the last expansion in half and are exactly only half. exactly. Or the first expansion was actually supposed to be a part of the initial launch and they had to cut that. Like, there's a lot of things it could be. I don't care. I still perma run this map. I love it so much. And we're getting two expansions this year. Hugh Mungo. New equipment and armor. He didn't really go into that. They showed uh they showed some video of the uh they showed some video of the new guns. Uh the PKM, the SVT, the AVT, the AK-12, the sawed-off shotgun, which it literally is called Rizzi's dad's shotgun. It's like the double barrel, but like super tiny. Uh in like new like PM pistol animations. I don't I don't know. Um but they they showed um they showed some of the new guns. The PKM bro looks nuts. The SVT is like a I guess it's two different versions. All I know is the AVT is a full auto Mosin. <laughs> it's like a 20 round mag fully automatic Mosin. And then the PKM looks like such a meme. Dude. Yeah, nobody's going to use it. And then the seriously. PKM is Dude, I'm interested. I'm interested to see, especially with some of the features that we're getting later in, in patch, uh, in the next patch, in the December patch that we'll see. Um, but the PKM, it's going to be a boss weapon. It's the streets of Tarkov boss weapon. I don't think we're going to see that purchasable from the traders. Uh, I think it's going to just be off the boss. And I don't think solos are ever really going to run it, right? Like, it's just, it's the most unruly thing. It took, it takes three and a half business days to ADS. The recoil is out of control. But that's kind of what it needs to be, right? Like, it it can't be like the foul where it's like, oh, we need to buff the PKM. Like, it's a, it's got like, it's like 150 round belt fed mag or whatever, right? Like, it can't really be that good. Man, I hate the, the the one thing that I don't like to see though. Looking at the PKM, because when you look at new stuff, you expect it to be like a lot of times either like in the new engine or or whatever, yeah. right? And th the first thing I see with the PKM is the the stock of the gun going up, 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 up in front of your oh. like as if the stock is on the bridge of your nose. Yeah. Why is the butt of the gun coming up? The butt of the gun should not Dude, be coming up. I know, bro. Listen, why is my why is my PMC holding it against their sternum? Yeah, and you're gonna be even more depressed later. I put my butt. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Oh, it, with the recoil, I saw that. I almost vomited. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. But, um, bunch of guns, whatever. Like the uh, that it's funny. Of all the guns, like the AVT is the one I'm the most like maybe not worried about, but like interested by because. It was kind of like the Vepra Hunter. Remember when the Vepra Hunter came to the game and everyone was like, oh my God, it's a it's a super cheap semi-auto like, you know, DMR that shoots, you know, 308, you know, M80, M61 and like, and it was pretty, It's it was the new Mosin because everybody was running it. It's super cheap. There are scav guns. The AVT is kind of what I'm worried about in the same way. It's like, is that going to be like a scav gun or something that's super cheap and super easy to find? Because even with only 20, 30 rounds, it's still ultimately like a full auto Mosin. So that's going to be interesting. But uh, the PKM, interesting. Sawed off shotgun, kind of a meme. I want the sawed off shotgun so badly to be uh, fit in my pistol slot. <laughs> Dude, imagine just like destroying someone's armor and then quick swapping to that and just like double firing both barrels of Magnum Buck. Like that would be so sick. Um, the uh, next thing is we're getting the new, the first Streets boss, Caban, which was funny because there was actually a little bit of a, there was a little bit of a mix up. Caban was, is currently the name of one of Gluhar's guards. So somebody died to Caban and was like, is the new boss in the game? And Apple responded to the tweet and was like, uh, we're removing him from the Gluhar's guards to avoid confusion. So he's not in the game. But, uh. I imagine so he's going to be the PKM guy because they would add the PKM boss and the PKM guy, um, the PKM gun and the PKM boss in the same patch. So the PK, so Kaban coming. Uh, the next thing is the weapon stand in the hideout, which is interesting because like they kind of teased that a little bit in one of the videos they did in the other podcast before, but Nikita said that it is 
basically an addition to your stash size. Like you can place weapons in that and then they they aren't in your stash. Does that kind of make sense? So I think yeah. it's something that's going to be like physicalized. You're going to be able to go into your stash and see the guns, but it ends up being like pseudo stash space, um, which is kind of cool. And he said it's upgradable. So that's kind of cool. It might be cool aesthetically, you know, for the hideout, but I think most people will just enjoy it as like basically like a free weapons case, you know, like a, an addition yeah. to their stash that they can upgrade if they want to, to get more stash space without having to buy a case. It'll be interesting to see how much space it is and how much it costs to upgrade and stuff like that. But and it, does it show visually <laughs> in the in the? I think it hideout? will show visually in the hideout. Yeah. So it is kind of like the Skyrim like armor stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so like you can put some cool guns there or some big guns there or whatever. And so I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see how like how easy will it be to place guns on there. You know, will you forget that you have them? How big is it? Um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we get to some of the more like vague, just like random game design like things. Like the quest rebalance is in this patch. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, who knows, right? I've been like, is this rebalancing the quests or is this like, now the reward is eight Tashankas and the reward used to be four Tashankas. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. No comment. No <laughs> But we're getting the, the, and that's the thing is like, it doesn't show up anywhere even later. So like, they've been saying that they want to rebalance the quests for a really long time. This is the only time it shows up on the roadmap here. And so like, I'm a little bit intrigued to see if it's going to be a bit bigger of a quest rebalance, but I'm trying to temper my expectations that it's they're just going to change some rewards, maybe the order in which six of the quests show up in. and what, what it's, it's going to be Mad Libs. It's going to be Mad Libs with, with different things in the empty spots. Yeah. Because for as much as I want to be excited about it and want to be hopeful about it, the what tempers that hope is the uh quests that we've been getting recently right like i'm like oh quest rebalance that could be cool and then i open the game and it's kill 20 pmcs while taking a thousand percent extra damage and if you die it resets kill 40 bloodhounds but they only spawn in groups of five and if you die it resets and I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm not super excited for the quest rebalance. You would think that by now, right? Like Nikita was talking about redoing the quests, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. And this whole time I've been saying, yeah, we'll fucking see every time they go and do anything, whether it's the daily quests, whether it's the new quests, it's always the same brand of yeah. a different flavor of the same bullshit, right? Yeah. Um, and you would think... That at some point, if, if all of a sudden they did an event and one of the events introduced like a really <laughs> cool new quest style or type or whatever, yeah. right? Then it'd be like, yo, maybe they're testing out some of the new stuff. Yep. And then the, the question would be, is it copium that they've figured out some new formula? Yes. Or, and I would be like, yeah, I'm not. I doubt that they'll be able to come up with more than one good idea, right? Yeah. But we're not even having that conversation. No, you're right. It's it's even worse than that. It's they keep coming out with more and more and more and more and more and more, and it's the same. And you would think that if in the last two years we've been saying no, the, the quests are going to be different. The main quest the quest line is going. I mean, it would be amazing. It would be an amazing like. Uh, yeah slow play no what's the what's the long con not always, <laughs> i almost said long con but then i said no um when you hustle someone right and you like you pretend like you're shitty at pool for the first yeah. game oh yeah whatever that is what's called that? what's I, that word yeah <clears throat> anyway i don't know sandbag not sandbag i'm not hustled i don't know what well, Whatever. Yeah. Maybe there's maybe there's sandbag and uh you know yeah. the, the quests and uh I, all of the ones they're coming out with they're gonna be like, we're gonna keep coming out with shitty ones just so they'll be wowed listen, when they come out. I'll take a hit of that copium, man. I would love that. I would love that so much. And we've said it so many times, bro, right? The 
there's so many quests in the game that have those mechanics, the golden pocket watch, the golden Zibbo things that would just spawn in the, in the game that only spawn for you. You know what I mean? There's a few quests where you like get the key you need for the quest. They're so close to good quest design. You know what I mean? They have 287 quests in the game. Four of them are really good. And like, they just keep adding more of the garbage ones. And it's like, Oh, please. And a lot of the real, a lot of the real good ones are the ones that involve non lootable items, like, like yes. quest items, yeah. like the pocket watch. And the I Zippo, still maintain yeah. the pocket watch is one of the best quests in the game. Yep. And the golden it, Zippo it, one it, is the it same. It has environmental storytelling. It tells you stuff about the characters. It makes you go to multiple places. It's not reliant on RNG. Yep. Because you can go to one spot and get it, right? Like there's just a million things about it that are like, Yep. Whoever did the fucking like second quest in the goddamn game, yep, hit it out of the park. The pocket watch quest, delivery from the past, and the golden Zippo quest. Now, I'm not saying delivery from the quest, delivery from the past is such a hard quest early on, but it's hard in a good way. You have to go here, you get a thing, then you have to go here and like plant the thing, and you're interacting with multiple maps. That's a hard quest. I don't think, especially if you're new to Tarkov, I don't think all quests should be that hard. But it's good quest design and similar with the golden pocket watch or sorry, no, the golden Zippo. You have to get the key and then you go into customs and you go to dorms and you open the room and then you find the Zippo and then you go plant it somewhere else. Or that might be another quest. There's a quest where you have to find a thing and then plant it somewhere else on that map. Once again, forcing you to like stay in raids a little bit longer, interact. All three of those quests were in the game in 2017 when I bought it. And we have no quests like that, no new quests like that in 2023. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of, they have a lot of the tools. This, this is this is one of the few times this isn't like Jesse and Veritas just being like, well, why don't they just do it this way? And, and it would require extra work. The, these things are in the game. They actually have these things. Oh, bullshit. The earliest there's another one of those quests where you, you go to the trunk of the car and there's a flash drive in there and you have to go place that flash drive. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, some of these other quests. So I hope that they took some of that feedback and there's more stuff like that in the game that can be challenging in a way that's not um like just do this thing, just bash your head against the wall doing this thing over and over and over and over again, a la uh setup, right? Where the Yushan could kill people with shotguns. You just you just go customs. You're just like going customs with shotguns, ensuring these shotguns, and as soon as you're done with the quest, you don't need the shotguns anymore. Or it's completely arbitrary. The, the good ones involve interacting with the world. Exactly. And the universe in yeah. unique and interesting ways that are that are, are not just completely and utterly arbitrary, right? Exactly. They tell stories, they they make you do things that can be done in a like ton of different ways. Yeah. You can just run right to the tanker, blinders on and hope, yeah. or you can spend 25 minutes fucking clearing yeah. every inch of the place, right? Um, you can fucking throw smokes down if you want. Nobody's probably ever done that, right? Yeah. But like, there's just so many ways that you can do sure. these quests and, and, the, and the restrictions and the requirements are not arbitrary and they're not yeah. restrictive and annoying. Like having to buy something, wear something, um, use something. Yep. Yeah. I mean, think about some of the most toxic quests. You have like a uh, setup. Once again, just bash your head against the wall. You've got capturing outposts when they made that required for Kappa, where that's li just literally just sit at a random spot for days and hope to find people. And then you have some quests like uh, there's the healthcare privacy quest where the key is just super rare and just... Everybody that plays the game just full stops at that quest on day three. And then just like some, it's either they never find it because they don't get to level 15 or they get to level 15 and spend six. Like the, the challenge of that healthcare privacy quest is just get to level 15 and spend 600,000 rubles on the key. That's the challenge of the quest, right? And, and that's not challenging. That's not challenging in an engaging way, right? That's not good quest design. Just pay 600,000 rubles for this key. No, but you know what people will say to justify it? Oh, well, dude, it's a money sink. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's the, they, they, they thought about this nine head, yeah. you know, years in advance. They're like, yo, for we sure. need, we're going to need 
an average of a uh, half a million ruble money yeah. sink around like level 17 no. for all of the PMCs to perfectly balance the economies. Get the fuck out of here. Yep. It's not a money sink. That's not the point of it. Yep. That was never the intentional design. Yep. It was just Somebody a byproduct. The, yeah. Someone mentioned the fucking Untar body armor and helmet. In my opinion, that might be a hot take. I love that quest. Yeah. I think that, I think, I think that, that, that like, the armor should be cheaper. They should yeah. probably give you like two or three yeah, sets of armor sets. and helmets. A hundred percent. But, uh, but otherwise it makes perfect sense in the game. You don't ask like why yep. every Jaeger quest. You're like, why would I do that? Jaeger's like, okay, I've got the job for you. You take needle, you stick in a fingernail. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then you piss on your open wound and then come back to me, take photo. And you're like, wow, you're a really fucking, you're a really Why? dirty nerd. I don't get it. You dirt. I have dark desires. I have, <laughs> I have a uh, special website people subscribe to. They pay for yes. special pictures. No, Fuck for sure. Here, for sure. Creep. Quests like that, like in my opinion, I love Shooter Born in Heaven. I think that's a, a good quest. There's, there's like, he's like, show me that you're a good s sniper, right? Uh, I think the Untar quest makes sense in the lore. Even setup makes sense in the lore where he's like dress up as a... Actually, I don't... I don't haven't read the flavors. That one was like dress up as a scav but then kill the scavs. The Untar one, like there's like... That's sabotage. He was like dress up as these guys. Go kill all these dudes. I want them to think that these guys are doing it. That's actually kind of a cool quest. It's just balancing. You're exactly right. How many of X do I need to kill? I don't mind when they're like kill scavs because scavs, there's there's consistency. You can find scavs yeah. every raid. And if you're pretty skilled, you might not need. So I like the idea of if it if they're, that's the quest, you get three sets, right? Three helmets, three armors, and then you can buy more if you need more. And we need to balance, you know, what the quest is, what you're given and how many of this, how many scavs or PMCs you have to kill X, Y, Z. But I love... I would much rather a go do this with this armor or this helmet than go do this with this gun. Like, why do I need 14 headshots with a shotgun? If you need me to kill some dudes, let me take whatever gun I want to kill some dudes, right? Like, why do I have to get headshots with a shotgun wearing this armor? You know what I mean? Like, it, th that stuff. When, when you're forced to choose a gun, that's so much more restrictive than having to use, like, an armor or something. But I do like the idea of them giving you some of the armors if you're going to do that. Like, here's the I, I things think, you need for the in, task. In some cases, it could make sense. Like, when I propose a redesign of Shooterborn, when you when you read the flavor text, if someone says, I want, like, what he's saying is, you need to prove to me that you can handle multiple situations, yeah. multiple, you know, um, multiple enemies, blah, blah, blah. You know, prove to me that you're, you're a fucking operator. Yeah. Well, to me, getting... 12 or 15 headshots over 100 meters on all these different places. It's yeah. like dumb and arbitrary. But what I proposed was, and it was a combination of like the flavor text from Shooterborn <laughs> plus the logic of Gunsmith. Oh, yeah. Which was, you want to prove you're good? You need to build an SMG with this requirement. And, and, and so what I had was build an SMG with this much ergo yeah and kill killa for example and then and then so there were three bullet points and then it was uh, build a dmr and then kill rashala rashala or you yeah. know it was something maybe pmcs i don't know from over 80 meters yeah it doesn't have to be a headshot it's just you kill them who yeah. fucking cares you know but with a yeah. dmr um with and if it was a long distance shot then you're going to want to use like a scope right yeah yeah the smg and then another one was um, with some sort of assault rifle um, under a certain amount of ergo and kill like 10 scavs, you know, or whatever, yeah. right? But it was like, you're building guns, but you're not, you're building them to use them <clears throat> yeah. and for a purpose that makes sense. And, and that proves that you can do close quarters, yeah. that you can do long distance, and that you can do medium. Yeah, That's like, to me, the perfect marriage of all of the essence of Gunsmith and of Shooterborn yeah. put together. Yeah. I like that. And then they even they even added some, you know, going back to the the healthcare privacy thing where like the the difficulty of the quest is just the key. We've talked a lot about how like the key economy is just super scuffed. But like they even did some of the things with um like I like what they did where the unknown key 
permanently spawns on that dead scaven customs in the bush. And the, the machinery key for the golden pocket watch permanently spawns in the jacket on yep. third story dorms. So like stuff like that, where they could marry that with a little, if they wanted a quest to be more difficult, some of the later lightkeeper tasks are like, you had to find some things like, cause I only did it to get the little transmitter. So I could go out. To, that's as far as I would go with the quest. And some of the ones you need closer up is like, you have to find a flash drive and there's 38 different spawns on lighthouse for the flash drive. That's too many. But that idea of like, you want the healthcare privacy key, right? Like it spawns on shoreline in one of five different places. So now it's forcing you to traverse the map. You can mix that with a little delivery from the past if you wanted a harder version of it. Where like this key is on reserve in yeah. one of three places. It's always going to be it was there. A euro on room one eighteen, but I couldn't remember if it was east or west. Exactly. So it's like you know, like so there's... now you have to go to a map, find the key that always spawns, and then go do your quest. And that's difficult in a sense that like it might take a few tries, but every raid you go into or every time you attempt, you have and you have the opportunity to succeed. As opposed to just like, I have to go farm money, spend 600,000 rubles instead of buying a junk box, buy this key that has 40 uses, and I never need to go into this room again, ever, and I also can't drop it from my friends. Like, that, that, the challenge of that just seems weird, you know what I mean? As opposed to setting up, and you could have levels of difficulty, right? Like, the pocket watch is, a, is you know, is a relatively... You know, you could just have levels of difficulty where how many spawns does the key have or how many uses does the key have or does it spawn on the same map or not. But there's different dials to turn there that all still result in like every time you embark on this quest, you have the opportunity to succeed instead of like, well, I just can't do this quest. I have to stop because I need more money to get the key. You know what I mean? Or I don't have any friends or like post in a discord you know, how, how, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's a money sink. Yeah, well, how hardcore is it? Because what we're really doing is posting in our disc of our friends' discords, like, hey, does anyone have this key? Yeah, I'll take you there. And then it wasn't even the money sink, right? Like, we just ended up getting around it. Like, so, I don't know. Bro, here's the thing. Everything we just talked about, I promise you, it's not, not a single person no. <laughs> at BSG thinks like this. Yeah, and it's not happening. This is not how they think. <laughs> this is not how they think. So, quest rebalance. They didn't talk about it. I don't know what it means, but we're getting a quest rebalance. Um, some of the other more vague things, like glass shader optimization, they mentioned that. They were trying to like work with like semi-transparent and transparent things. There's lots of bugs on streets. Where if you like... Too? That would be nice. I doubt it. There's lots of bugs on streets where if you're like stand in a certain place and like lean all of the windows of the building you look at disappear and you can just like see through, you know what I mean? Like there's few, some of the trains where if you like lean, the glass just like disappears and then comes back. So glass shader optimization, some stuff like that. Light source processing optimization. Now I was full copium that I hoped that they meant interchange, but later in the podcast, they were like, Demirko was playing and he was like, ask some questions. And one of the questions was interchange update, please. And Nikita was like, yeah, with the with the lighting update, it's going to be better. So the only mention of lighting on this entire roadmap is this light source processing optimization. And then Nikita later said that interchange is going to look better as a result of the lighting update. So I'm a little hopeful about this. Like, I'm sure the lighting on all the maps could get better, but interchange is obviously the one that's like, OMG, please, God, please, please, God. So we might get... We might get a little bit of better interchange lighting. I'm coping. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, various tech, technical and functional adjustments. Yep. AI behavior improvements. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, and then <laughs> you see like a weirdly placed directly just through the middle we have new location i imagine that's terminal because i think in the past he said that terminal was the only other map that is required to like send the game to 1.0 like streets and terminal because terminal plays a part in the storyline quest which we didn't mention the storyline quest at all so i would imagine it's terminal 
I'm at the point where I just have doubts that they're like surprising us with like it's town or suburbs, right? Like I, and to me, all those maps are off the table and the, in there. They're like, what maps do we need to go 1.0? So I imagine new location is terminal. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll see. Um, so that is everything that's coming in the uh, that is everything that is coming in the August wipe. He said he didn't know exactly when in August it's going to be, but it's going to be coming in August. He said it's, I mean, he, he seemed like they were pretty, pretty on top of the ball with, uh, with what's going on. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So before we move on to like the other wipe, I think people aren't going to like, I think people are going to end up. Well, people are always going to complain. That's that's a given. I think people will complain that this there's it's not a very content rich patch. I am personally very excited because there's just tons of quality of life stuff here. Tons of stuff directly and not just not just things like sometimes they've done quality of life stuff that like nobody ever used. You know what I mean? Or 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 the quality of life didn't come in a way the community would have asked for. So many of these things are directly things that the community has been asking for a long time, like removing the pixelation effect. It's not listed here, but they showed it in one of the videos. Double click to use consumables. So you can double click food. You can double click your ibuprofen in your secure container. It's going to use it. That's going to help a lot. The new trader UI, the sidearm quick swap is something that the community has wanted for a long time. Selling stuff. Um, talk, being able to heal whatever body part you want while you're in the raid, while you're looking at your stuff. So I'm super excited about it. And then in addition, we're getting the streets update, the streets expansion, which I just love that map so much. Uh, and then of course, all of the more vague stuff like AI behavior and light source, like who knows what that means. But personally, I'm excited. This feels like a lot of quality of life stuff. And the biggest thing for me that we've been talking about is like this next wipe needs to work. You know what I mean? It needs to it needs to be functional. And the difference between where Tarkov was at this wipe and where it is right now is so vast. And if they can keep the momentum of what it, where it is right now rolling by putting out a wipe that answers a ton of things that the community's asked for in terms of quality of life and doesn't really break anything. Yeah, it's not a ton of like brand new, oh, the new recoil or the new armor hitboxes. It's not a, you know, content content, but it makes everybody's interaction with the game easier more fluid and doesn't and, and it's a wipe that feels smooth that what's not a visible players it's not seven fps on streets with all the rubber banding like so i don't know i'm I, i'm hopeful that this wipe is a it's a good balance between not being so many things that it's going to break the game but enough things that makes everybody that interacts with the game more fluid and better does that make sense yeah and i mean also like how how they end up pulling this off too is going to be telling for the future right like if they have yes. if they want if any semblance of a hope of pulling off 1.0 like at some point they need to like they need to start putting out more updates that don't break take, everything that don't take steps backwards yes yeah when one you know when 1.0 comes out 1.1 like you you want to have yeah that's a, a good finished point house with a finished foundation and you want to be able to build off of that you don't want to have a million projects half done. Yeah. All rickety and janky, right? Like that's a good point. Yeah. Otherwise then the future of Tarkov is going to be so fucking mired yeah. in performance issues and that's and so true. Needing to have bug fixes and because in other games, that's not really the expectation. I mean, unfortunately it's becoming the expectation a little bit more like call of duty their season four update, like everybody's performance got so much worse. Like I saw a ton of people call duty. Like, so unfortunately that that is, but traditionally when, if you have, if you paid for a finished game, a finished game, when an update was coming, you were always excited. You were never worried like, Oh no. So like Tarkov does need to start establishing that precedent that we can update the game and not break everything or not take a bunch of steps backwards in this direction. So yeah. that being said, I'm okay with the balance of this wipe. I'm super excited. I think the interaction with the game is going to be so much more fluid. I'm super excited to see 
the results of the netcode patch, I've been having a ton of fun with. What does that feel like early wipe when I don't have elite strength and endurance, when I don't have all elite skills, when I don't have weapon mastery, when I don't have 30 recoil control? I'm excited to test those things. You know what I mean? I don't I think it's going to feel like a different game. Um, so interesting, very, very hopeful. And if it's broken, I'm going to be depressed because this wipe had so much potential and it was so busted on launch and they had more people than ever watching Tarkov on Twitch and that fell off a cliff. More people left earlier. Like I, I like two months ago, I started getting messages where like, isn't this already the longest wipe they've ever had? And we were like so far away from it being the longest wipe that's ever. But that that's where people are mentally. Where, there's so many people just so over the bull crap that like it feels like the longest wipe ever. So, uh, so I'm going to be. I just really hope. I don't want to be depressed. I don't. I I want it to be good. Now before we move on. Speaking of not wanting to be depressed, I would love to thank the sponsor of tonight's episode, uh, and that is BetterHelp. Um, BetterHelp, we partner with them for for a long time now, um, and uh, they're they're someone we're super excited. They're like an online platform where you can get the help you need. You can get therapy. You can get counseling. You can have somebody to talk to. Uh, we've talked at length. Both of us have personal experiences with therapy and personal experiences with BetterHelp specifically, um, allowing you to just like get in and get to somebody that you feel comfortable with, that you feel like understands you and being able to do that in a really smooth, really cohesive way, being able to do it all online, being able to switch your therapist if you need to, if you just don't vibe with this person, being able to write notes or communicate with them in between sessions. Uh, it's just a really smooth process, a really good way to get somebody to talk to. Yeah. Okay, think about it. How how many how many lives do we get? <sighs> it's a multiple choice question. There's only one right answer. <laughs> sorry to all my uh nine. Wait, that's cats. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to all my friends who <laughs> believe in reincarnation. Um <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh but like listen, we get one life. What are the chances that you're going to get it right on your first Dude. try? Yep. Probably zero, right? Uh, we we all we're all works in progress. We all we yep. all get shit we got to work through. We all got stuff we got to figure out whether it's whether it's work, whether it's productivity, whether it's relationships, whether it's just your own happiness, right? Yep. Like th there's nothing more important than getting that in line and sorted as soon as possible, as early as possible, as quickly as possible as Yep. pain-free as possible um so yeah all i can say about myself is that you know therapy changed my life yep i began therapy with better help um and where i am today compared to like where i was a year ago night yep. and day yeah absolute night and day you know I've, I've i've been some some deep dark down places yep uh and now like yeah all i can say is that I like I'm smiling again, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, and if you're so, yeah. if you're in those deep dark down places, like therapy is so valuable. But also like one of the things that I love to champion is that like even if you're not, don't feel like you have to be all the way down to the bottom of the barrel in order to get that. Like it's pretty easy to tell when things are are taking a turn when maybe you lost a job or somebody something entered your life or somebody left your life and you're not all the way down to the barrel yet, but you feel like things are changing or things are happening, it's just as good as a pre preventative to get that's somebody to talk point. to, to challenge the way you're looking at whatever the situation that's happening to you is and can pivot before getting down to the bottom of the barrel. So, it, yeah. Bro, that's actually an insanely good point that that I, I, I want to touch on because... When I first started going to therapy, it was for something, you know, for for just the general, you know, issues that I was having personally with motivation and with, you know, my interest in in making content and dealing with the struggles that have to do with content creation yeah. and live streaming and everything that comes along with it. And then we got hit with a pandemic and then yeah. health issues, family health issues all kinds of other stuff piles on top and your world can change like that. Yep. 
Um, yeah, and I can't actually, I can't actually like, I, I hadn't thought about what what if when I had that big decline, if I wasn't in therapy, the chances of me getting off my ass and doing it then was would yeah. probably be pretty low. And I don't even want to know or think about you know yeah where 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 I would be, that would you know? yeah where that would end so, up yeah so it's awesome we love it um so discover your potential with BetterHelp you can visit betterhelp.com slash podcast today to get ten percent off your first month that is betterhelp h e l p dot com slash podcast for ten percent off your first month thank you so much BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, so um so there's there's quite a bit more so as per this roadmap there what's super interesting i was convinced they weren't weren't, weren't even going to use the w word they weren't going to talk about the wipe at all i thought we were super far away from a wipe they said wipe is in august and then they're showing another wipe in december so this is super interesting because if that's true this will be the sh one of the shortest wipes that we've had in many years. Like we're currently like, I think we're currently at the longest wipe. I think we have officially crossed the threshold that right now we're in the longest wipe ever, like 210 days, whatever. Uh, and it's going to obviously be a few weeks before we get the wipe. But then they're going to wipe in December sometime. I would imagine towards the end, they've been doing like late December wipes for the past few years. So that'll be really interesting to go into a shorter wipe and, and interesting to know that that's the plan. Every wipe we go in, we just assume it's going to be around a six month wipe. A lot of people I, I saw, I saw some stuff where people are like, man, well, it's going to be such a short wipe. I don't know if I'm going to even want to play or whatever. I think that's crazy because at the four month mark of this wipe, every I started the turn happened where it was like, oh, when's the wipe? So I think that's yeah, not but but that's also a different group of people than the people who 48 hours after the wipe are like, man, I think I'm too late, man. It's too late to start. Can't yeah, start now. true. You know, it's too late, Jesse. I really want to start. But is it too late? Is it really too late? It's like, no, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I personally think it's going to be good. Uh, I think it'll be good. Well, first of all, and the other thing I said was. Would you rather them postpone additions to the game to arbitrarily hit a six month wipe? Like you know what I mean? If it's if that patch is ready four months in, ship it. If it's ready three months in, let's ship it. Don't we well, all well, want argument is gonna progress be, to the game? Do it. Just don't wipe. Uh, well, no. This wipe would need a wipe. I mean, we'll we'll go through some of the features, but all I'm saying is, I think that especially since this wipe that's coming is more quality of life focused and less like here's a new mechanic that's going to change the game focused. I think that it's actually smart as hell to release all that stuff, maybe get a dope wipe and wipe season under your belt and then cut it off at the pass before it starts to feel too long or like, oh, this well, there wasn't enough content. We can, we can go into this and start teasing this kind of stuff. Um, this... It's a little confusing the the graph that you see, the roadmap because not all of the blue bars go all the way to the wipe. You know what I mean? So like it's weird. It's color coded in the bottom. All of the blue says winter update, but then all of these bars stop at different points. But I don't believe that people are like, oh well, those are all mid wipe patches, and I just don't really if because if you count them up, there's one, two, three, four different lengths. So basically what I'm saying is I don't think that they'll be able to pull off four mid wipe patches in a four month wipe all with significant <laughs> like mechanics like the recoil rework is a tiny little bar. I don't think one month into this August wipe we're going to get the recoil rework. Does that make sense? Hey, where Where is that? I'm trying to. It's oh, the okay. second blue bar. So like you would think looking at this graph that that means you'd get that between the August and the December wipe. Well, my, my assumption is that that bar actually continues way off to the left into they've been working on it for yeah. a year now. And that's when they're planning on releasing it. And for some reason, it doesn't go all the way to the left side. Yeah. When and really, and that's it should the thing. Go. If, if it's because once again, 
it, it ends up being scuffed no matter how you look at it. If you do look at it that way, where people are like, oh, that's like how much dev work they've put into it so far or how close it is to completion. I don't know. It just, you think they would put that. Basically, I'm looking at this as if every single blue bar is a thing that's coming in the December wipe and we're not going to get it. Like, yeah, maybe that's, it's how much they've worked on this item already. Like maybe this third it third iteration of Streets of Tarkov, because by that logic, it would mean the third iteration of Streets of Tarkov is already ready because it's full, complete. We're just putting it. Well, so so I would, my my understanding of this, the visual here is that like, we I expect the thing to be released all the way at the right side of each bar. Yeah. Yeah. So like that would mean that the third iteration of the Streets expansion is going to be done basically december one you know yeah. or whatever probably december 20th and they're going to do like drops or whatever yeah. for the new yeah. year yeah but um we can go through the things that are coming so preset magazine ammo loading i don't know what that means i think it means you can create a preset of like i want four mags in my black rock and i want them to be filled with this ammunition but no, my, well, well, I assumed that it was, I want to be able to weave armor pen flesh bullets oh, in Jesus my magazines Christ. maybe, and, and then put three tracers at the bottom. Like the, the min maxi thing that like yeah. people talk about that I, yeah, that it's going to be the meta that is not, it, oh my God, I hate it so much. The reason why I'm, I hate this yeah. so much is because the first thing I did when I created Battle Buddy a million years ago, and I had the, and I had the, the uh, simulation, the ballistic yeah. simulation, where I could run through, and I could go <laughs> through a thousand fights between two PMCs, yeah, and I could manually go through and do whatever I wanted, and I realized that like, basically, no matter what you did, in like eight out of ten different combinations, it was like five bullets, time to kill, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. If you did five armor piercing bullets, it was five bullets was the average time to kill. If you did armor pen, tracer, flesh round, armor pen, tracer, yeah. flesh round, it was five rounds to kill. Like yeah. if you did fucking all flesh rounds, it was like six to kill. If you did, yeah. like, it was, it's such an insignificant thing. Yeah. But people, because they don't understand the systems yeah. and they think they're clever, like nobody's ever thought of, well, what happens if I if I do like an armor pen and then a flesh because they think they're shooting the same hole and they're putting a hole in the armor, which is <laughs> yeah, not yeah. how it fucking works. Right. Yeah. It's so irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, so that might be what it means. He didn't say anything about it. We didn't get anything about it, but preset magazine ammo loading. I, I can very much so see that being a thing, by the way. Um, okay. The recoil rework. So moving on to the next one. Um, <laughs> suck, dog shit. Oh, okay. So the recoil rework. Man, I don't... It's... It's hard because it's like... We... Uh, I don't know. A lot of... Everybody hates it. Which is, you know, understandable. Um, now... Preface with the fact that he literally said the point of showing the video was like, this is our work in progress. We've just started. We really, really want feedback about this. And then later, Clean got confirmation that the new recoil will come to the ETS whenever they have a, a shipped version of it. The annoying thing about all the clips... <sighs> Is that I don't know. I mean, I I watched like three quarters. I didn't get all the way to the end. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, once I got about three quarters of the way through, and uh, you could see like the the voodoo. Yeah. Or the valley, yeah, whichever yeah, one the it voodoo. was. And then it looked the worst it's ever looked. Ever. Completely broken. The worst it's ever looked. It's 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 it was so bad. I'll never play Tarkov again if that's the way it looks. Yeah. I mark my fucking words. If that's the way that the optics look, I'll never touch the game ever again. Yeah. I was really, really hoping that that was not what they're going to do to the voodoo. That would be it's, atrocious. It's, the utter, it's a complete and utter opposite direction of where, yeah. like, whenever it's been like this, it's always been like, oh, shit, the optics are bugged. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, we've, and we've gone through, there have been people that have gone through that have, like, literally fucking modded the game 
and put in like custom yeah. reticles and everything and made the optics look fucking phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, but so that's a whole other thing. That's the reason why I, I basically dry heaved three quarters of the way through and had yeah. the alt F4. But in the beginning, he never uh like uh adjusts for the recoil. No, not at all. So I would have wanted to have seen yeah. that. Cause, just like an attempt at least that's the thing that's the thing for me too is that like when you look at the beginning of the clip when he does those bursts it kind of looks like it goes more just straight up in a vertical line than it does right now so it, it kind of felt like better at first i was like oh like this might be better yeah. because you could just pull down you and, and and like you could do controlled bursts that way where you just know and you pull down and you could actually control a burst instead of it going like wild it was like, oh, that's interesting. The things I had qualms with was like when he was semi-tapping, the return was nowhere near. Did you notice that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like it yeah, would just go it would just go in a random direction and and stay way off. There, there was no return to where you're aiming, which is just mind blowing because like that's that to me is the opposite of They wanted us to semi auto and controlled fire and what this does is it makes semi-auto completely yeah. like not work and then it makes it so that you're just gonna spray and yeah. close your eyes for the first seven bullets and then once you're done with the first seven well now you've got a fucking spray that yeah. is yeah well not only that i was gonna make that point too not only saw so, yeah not only he literally said in the podcast like i need to send you the clip veritas he was like i look at the recoil and I, I don't like that semi on. <laughs> you, you guys must have never shot Bro, a gun. Bro, we have some absolute gun nuts in chat. Some absolute Chad operators. Anyways, he literally said, I don't like that um, semi-auto and bursting isn't very viable. And then shows us semi-autoing leagues worse than what we have right now so much worse than what we have and right bursting now. um well bursting maybe because if you controlled for recoil and it was much more of a vertical spread that would be better than what we have right now because right now that your burst is like crazy 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 um yeah but i guess the, i guess the difference is is that there's there's two there's two um like halves of the 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 spray yeah it's like no control, no control, no control. Boom! Now I'm perfectly yeah. in control, which is like the problem, right? Yes. It, so that's what I was saying. Would it would motivate you to just full auto spray and kind of just like randomly pull down? Yeah. And then in about a second and a half, you have no recoil anymore. Yes. Yes. It's just gonna go. Whereas, like, and then as soon as you're out of ammo, it'll go whoosh. Yeah. Because you know it's it's jumping up so much. Yeah. Whereas we've talked about before, it would be nicer if on the burst the first three to five bullets were actually low and grouped together. And over time it rose, you know what I mean? Because then you could just, like, brr, 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 you know what I mean? Controlled bursts would be, um, would be better because, so I would like to see them flip that where the first three to five to seven bullets stay relatively close together. And then the recoil grows over time. The other thing that I was going to say was semi-autoing. He literally just said, I don't like it because semi-auto doesn't seem very uh, very viable. And then this is like the opposite of auto compensation, right? Like the auto compensation effect is the game saying I'm a Chad operator and for the player then compensating for recoil and tightening up the spread, you know, in. This is the exact opposite where this is the game saying your skill level doesn't matter. When you click the button, I'm going to roll dice and then just send your reticle in a random direction. So so this is uh, this is the opposite of auto compensation. You click and because you're not actually holding the gun, firing the gun, feeling like the way the gun is moving, you as the gamer then have to wait until the the like you couldn't the, what I'm saying is you couldn't compensate for that. If you know that shooting an M1A meant that the M1A always on its single shot went up and to the right, you could learn to control for that on semi-auto taps. But yep. because the M1A now, when you the first bullet, it will go up and to the right. The second bullet, it will go down to the left. The third bullet will just go straight 
vertical, the fifth bullet, that means it's it's almost introducing delay. You have to shoot, figure out what dice roll you got, then compensate for it. It's the complete opposite of auto compensation in in the fact that it's just just let the gamer be the gamer. Just put the stats bake into the gun and then let the guy gaming learn that gun. The auto compensation we always said is weird because it's like, let me learn the gun and then compensate as the operator. You're, this is the only instance in the game where the game itself just presumes that I have knowledge and then, and then the game executes something on my behalf. And that feels weird. That's always why we said the auto compensation feels weird. This is just that in the opposite direction where it's like- It, it, it auto compensates on your behalf in, in the worst in possible way. In the worst way. possible way. So- yeah, it's so it, it, they need to abstract muscle memory. Ex exactly. Which we've talked about. Exactly. There's two, there's two ways they could do that. They could make it so it's boom and always comes back to the same place every yep. time. Or they could do it so that it always does. It doesn't return to the same place every time, but at least it stops in the same place. Like yes. Boom. Like, which is and how. Then you um, yes. How. Uh, what's the the like SWAT? The news, oh, ready or newer, not. Ready or not. Ready or not. You go bang. Bang. There's no yeah. adjustment whatsoever. Bang. It just stops. And you have to go bang. You pull then down, bang, pull down. learn that gun and you learn how so to pull it. Right. So it's either you have to learn the timing that of the automatic compensation is yeah. A or B, you need to learn the amount and the direction, the extent of the adjustment so that you can do it yourself. Yeah. Um, or C, which is what they've shown which is the worst of all possible things, which is we're going to send it in a random direction and yep. we're not going to compensate for it. Yeah. There's no... You're riding the horse without the reins. Yeah. You, you're not in control. So I hope that they understand that, but I'm scared that they don't because I can't believe they showed that to us. I can't believe... Now, once again, the burst I'd be interested in or whatever, but I just can't believe that that... That that that, that transpired. I can't believe that out of Nikita's mouth, he said the words... I don't like that shooting in semi-auto, single-fire taps aren't as viable. And then they show us an objectively worse single-fire experience. Like, there's no universe that, not even the hot dog finger universe, where he can... I would shoot better with hot dog finger. Yeah, he can look at that and then say, ah, see, now that fixes the problem. That is better. You know what I mean? Now, I know, and somebody said it in chat, and, and, and it's very important. I said this at the beginning. He said it's a work in progress, and he said he's asking for feedback, but this is the feedback. You can't, like, do you understand how this works, by the you way? You can't have it both Chad, ways. You, like, he said they're looking for feedback. When we give feedback, you can't be, you can't say, well, hey, don't provide feedback. He said he was looking for feedback. That's what you're saying. This is the feedback, and so this is it. You know what I mean? So, like, um, but it is important to know they said that it's not the finished project product and they're open to feedback. But but what I'm saying is how open to feedback can they be if what happened happened? <laughs> like he said, we don't like it because X. He showed us a very worse version of X and then said, well, give us feedback on it. It's like, are you listening to the feedback? Because I don't even, I don't know. I don't understand. Um, it, it's, it's the... It, it, uh, <laughs> Dude, I hate it, man, because it's like, I know they're yeah. not going to listen to the feedback. And also, I know that that they're so far fucking out in Jupiter yeah. that they can show that and not be embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that makes me think that, A, Nikita has never seen it before, that he's not in the meetings with yeah. these people telling them these. Oh, my God, I don't know. bro. It's, it's, it's every single possible red flag you could ever fucking get. We're getting again and again and again and again, yeah. right? The only, the hope that I have is that they, they obviously don't understand how to do, when here's what's, here's what's crazy. Like, and, and here's the biggest takeaway, if you're listening to this from me of my frustration, isn't that it, the recoil system isn't what Jesse Kazam wants. My, my biggest frustration is the takeaway is Nikita said words and then showed something that was the opposite of the words he said. So it's not that the recoil is not what Jesse wants. My frustration is the recoil is not what Nikita wants. I'll tell you what I want for the recoil. We've had that conversation many times. But what blows my brain into freaking smithereens is he says, 
we want semi-auto tapping to be better and then shows that. And I go, that makes me scared because For, I'm like, because you're open to feedback, but what the hell? You know what I so mean? So either he, he hasn't seen it. Yeah. Or like there's, there's two universes, right? He's completely clueless as to what the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Yeah. Which how, how often have we pointed that out in the last fucking yeah. decade, you know, that Tarkov has been doing what Tarkov has been yeah. doing, right? That, that like Nikita doesn't know what the fuck is going on in his own game. Yeah. Remember when I made a game that was said Tarkov was going in the wrong direction and yeah. I said, hey, Nikita, this is what you want and this is not what your game has. Yeah. And like 98% of the fucking community agreed. Yeah. Um, it's either that he, that he doesn't know or he does know and that's even worse. Yeah. Because he looks because then that means that yeah. He can say the words that he says, look at the thing, and those two make sense in his brain. And that's the worst universe of all. The sky is hot dogs. The sky is hot dogs. Can you imagine if the sky is hot dogs and yeah. we are, and, and our we have basketball fingers? Dude. Try shooting the gun with basketball fingers. That makes <laughs> actually, you know what? In a world in which we have basketball fingers, the recoil makes sense and everything Nikita said makes sense. <laughs> there we go. There you have basketball it. Basketball fingers. Dude, just look at it's it's a uh, one minute and twenty five seconds in the video, or a little after that. The you very know, after my surgery, I'm trying not to vomit. Right? Yeah. The very first shot he takes with the voodoo, like you can, what we just laid out, why this is so bad. You literally see it happen. The very first shot he takes with the voodoo, he shoots, has no idea where his reticle ended up, and then yanks it way off, overcorrects because he's looking for the bullet hole to tell him where he shot last and then corrects his overcorrection. Like, the video Dude, proves. He, literally goes, he goes, bang. And he pauses there for like a solid second. He's like, second. what the hell? Where am I? Oh, uh, like that, like that's what I'm talking about. Like, how can you watch that a after saying we want semi-auto to feel better and feel better? Now, I will say, you know what's interesting? Even when you look at like the M4 that he's using, like with the red dot on it, you know the bug? Okay, it's not a bug. I I don't know if it's a bug. You know the thing everybody was like, oh, this is kind of cool right at this wipe where if you're aiming and you free look, it pulls your FOV back and you can like lock it there. You press tab and let go. That's what this looks like, by the way, because when I rock an M4 like that, I can't see the or go to go to like 30 seconds. You can't see the charging handle and part like that's why I hate the M1A, the SAS M1A, because you can see part of like the buttstock. It just feels like he's holding it out here. The model. Yeah, yeah. You, it feels like he's holding it out here. Well, I rock M4s all the time, and I never see the buttstock there. Now, he could just be playing on 50 FOV or 120. I play on 63, so I don't remember which way it would go. But he could just be playing on a massively. But it looks like he did the the thing where, like, you middle mouse and it shoops. Because w I've done that with voodoos, too, just to mess around. And that's kind of what your voodoo looks like. Because it looks so much smaller when you do that FOV thing, and you can lock it in. Now, that... That freaking scope shadow is disgusting. Please don't do that to my my baby. But it just feels the whole club felt weird. I still think, like I said, I think the the burst seemed maybe better if you compensated. It's hard to tell what attachments he had on the gun too. But it, it's 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 safe to say the community was concerned. The the the, the backlash was very clear. Pretty much everybody. And even the people who actually said, like, this could be better had a lot of, like, but this and but that. And I don't think anybody that I saw came to defense of the um, the semi-auto. Like, it just... Fucking it, hyper rad. The first one, not going to lie. This ain't it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was uh, the vibe. That was the vibe. Was Everybody was like, not going to lie. This ain't it. So... Wait, even Tobias... The yes. recoil pattern seems counterintuitive. Yes. He, he, he used to work for yes. DSP he and doesn't be like, anymore. Yep. First handful of bullets should be placed inside a relatively small circle and then travel it. He's exactly right. Yeah. The fucking oh my god! All of these memes. I'm I'm just scrolling through, and the the fucking third one is uh is Dan Exert. Yeah. With with what's his name? What's that fucking actor? Um. Name? It's not Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson just freaking the fuck out like, like no 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 no. no, no. no. Oh yeah. shit! Do you truly believe this is better? Oh my god. Yeah. So listen, they said they wanted feedback. They got a lot of feedback. I hope that the next thing we see is different 
Because because basically the only hope is so I was gonna say this earlier, I got sidetracked. The only hope is that this will be the crowning achievement of the ETS. If if the universe exists where they know what they want, and like the, the where you said the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Nikita knows what he wants, but doesn't know what they're doing, and they don't know how to do it. The only hope is that through feedback, the community guides them in the right direction. Like they see all this feedback and they go, oh, shoot, this ain't it. They try something, they put it on ETS and the feedback comes rolling in and hopefully it can just inch in that direction. I know that's mega copium, but that's all I can hold on to. It's all I have left to hold on to. Um, Somehow I, I see someone mentioned me in a tweet. I didn't even notice this before. I could see Veritas Games already heating up the furnace to burn this, <laughs> even with the additional info that it's far from being the final state. Yeah. True that. So True so that. the hope, the to end that on a hopeful note, it's just I hope that they took the feedback that was this ain't it, and they're making adjustments. Um, now, if you go to... Um, a little bit farther down from that. Uh, okay, uh, I can't read these. I need to get away from yeah, the comment section. Above, oh, God, oh, God. Above the PKM video, they showed the new armor hitboxes, <clears throat> man. And this is going to be another... This is going to be oh. a controversial one, man. There's parts of it that I'm like, this is so cool, just like from a like game design standpoint. But then as somebody who like PVPs and stuff like that, I'm, I'm super interested in this. I'm not saying it's, it's good or bad yet. I'm saying I don't know. But they showed, I mean, some of it's really cool. They show tiny little armor plates. They showed like the Thor armor can have over 300 armor points um, because there's so many different places. It uh, it shows you, uh, there's a part where he stops and it shows like there's back, chest, left side, right side, neck, stomach, left shoulder, right shoulder. And, and what armor class? So this, by the way, that that armor, the Thor armor in Tarkov right now is a class six armor. You put that on, you have class six armor neck to crotch completely top down. But you see he has the front and back plates are class six and everything else is class three. So that's super interesting. And the small plates, um, they do the little circle thing or the the edit preset or where the preset editor where you show all the different stuff. And then they show some in-game footage of like uh, a dude with a slick on getting one tapped to the neck. Um, like a slick, he has a slick and an Alton and he gets like one tapped to the neck or something like that uh, because there's a new head neck hitbox or whatever. And then uh, there's like shotgun pellets killing someone to the neck. And then... There's a, he, the guy with his Abralo and an Alton getting shot by a shotgun, and it's showing like the armor kind of tick down there. This is exactly what they said it was going to be, right? This is this is something. This is exactly what they said it was going to be, and it's something that they've said they're going to do for years. So this isn't this isn't like oh my god they're changing. Like if you've been following the game, this is exactly what they said. But I am definitely concerned at how how it'll affect the game you know what i mean especially since traditionally omega high flesh damage rounds are the cheapest right like magnum buck is like 32 rubles or something 100 rubles and you know sp6 for the val is like 2000 rubles or whatever now before people just i mean i already know that we've got the the redditors in the in the freaking chat and in the comment section I don't mind an entire shakeup of the system. I love I love the concept of like adapting to a new system like, oh, we need this, that, and the other. It's more with the ingredients we have on the table. This shakeup that we're talking about, I don't know that they're going to like consider all the things because there's like so few of these big chunky armors and there's so many super high flesh damage rounds that I just don't, I don't know that we have the necessary ingredients to do this flip and, and really my, my concern is we flip everything on its head, but we result in just a new meta where everybody just runs Magnum Buck and nobody can afford armor that covers your neck. And so it's just a shotgun game starting that day. Does that make sense? We're like, I'm all for shaking it up, but if shaking it up 
boils this down. Oh yeah, it's not slick mutant BP <laughs> meta anymore. It's just, uh, oh, MP153 trooper armor meta. If it just ends up being a different meta where there's two viable guns, two viable ammos, and two viable armors, that's not better, right? That's just different, and that's my concern. Bro, people want... People want the simplest, dumbest, straightforward answer, right? That's why people say, what's the best gun? They yeah. don't want they don't want you to think about recoil ergonomics. Oh, I'm overwhelmed by all the just yeah. just tell me the answer, right? Yeah. Now you don't have 23 options anymore for armor. You have 23 times every single armor times the number of possible plates you could put in each of the possible yes. slots times yeah, the yeah, number. Yeah. It's going to end up being one answer. It's like it's either you max out all the slots and all the things, yeah, or you wear nothing. Or you just wear like the trooper because there's no plates and it's and it's too yeah. much work. Yeah. The, the system is already infinitely more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah. Which is made obvious by the fact that there's a million bugs, confusion, questions about where why did I die with this bullet to this armor? Was it a bug? Was it yeah. not a bug? Was it ballistics? Was it a fragmentation? Yeah. Was it overpen? Was it blah blah blah? Right? Like nobody <laughs> fucking knows. Yeah. This adds nine million more variables. And it's that much more bullshit you have to think about, stress about, yeah. and watch guides about before you can get into the raid to then insta die and none of it will matter anyway. Yeah. So I I, I hate to poo poo on the thing because it looks fucking rad. Yeah. It it's does. just it's it's to me, it's a so much work and so much effort in a system completely and utterly fucking pointless. Yeah. It's not gonna add anything to the game except for confusion. Yeah. And more money and more clicks and more time and more stress. And, and it's not going to change the, the fucking time to kill. Yes, correct. And that's what I'm worried about, too. And that's the thing is, is once again, you're absolutely right. People do not want nuance. And, and I really think a lot of people are going to think that I th hate this idea. I don't hate the idea. I would just once again, I just go back to I don't know that they have the tools to execute on it well. I kind of like when games are complicated. And that's just me. I'm speaking very much so for myself here, not the casual player or anybody. I'm speaking for myself. I like having to learn a new thing and be like, oh, what's the best? There's 80 different options here. I love the RPG element of like, you know, loots everywhere and I got a min max. The, I, I like that. But even if you want to do that, even if you want to do like a healthy confusion, a healthy complexity, if you in, if you like this idea, if you like this feature, all I'm asking that you consider is that that December wipe, what if everybody on day one is rocking MP153s they can buy from Jaeger and 7mm buck or Magnum buck? And what if 127 days into the wipe, that's still all anyone's running? Will that be fun to you? I get it. This is a real thought experiment. Uh, experiment. If you're if you're in the chat, if you're if you if you're watching this, if you're listening, and you're like, I love this idea, man. Is that is that going to be fun for you? Because we, we're always saying we want we, you know we want to change the meta, and I'm okay to change the meta. I'm okay if a slick and hex is useless. I'm not saying I wear class. I'm level 67, and I still wear class four armors all the time. I'm not a meta slave. I don't care. I'm okay with shaking up the system. I'm just saying. Do we have the ingredients? Like to me, what we would need then is more class two, class three, and class four armors that look like gen fours, that cover neck, that cover shoulder, that are affordable, that have class two and class three plates that you can put there. Because that's the thing. If at level 20, you at least have access to an armor that can cover these things because right remember if we're talking about magnum buck you only need class two class one armor to stop it right but if we don't have those tools if those things aren't in the game then it's it'll it'll result in a just a different meta of everybody using this but the meta will then change to a more available cheaper alternative and and so that's what i'm saying is that like or, or it's, or it's. You feel like you need to invest more time, and I'm gonna put level six plates in every inch of all of this stuff, and you're still gonna get one tapped by M61 in yeah. the head, and it won't be relevant, yeah. right? And, and, and you, and you, no, go ahead. Well, that I was just gonna say that's the other point. Like that's that is absolutely the other point to make here is that Tarkov has always had an identity crisis, and the community then latches on to you know whatever side, and and, and both sides are are largely immovable. Not many people are willing to swing in the in-between. It's had an identity crisis between the RPG element, 
and, and the real just standard game design element of the longer you play, the more powerful gear you get, and that more powerful gear that you get needs to be more powerful. And then the other side of the identity crisis is at any moment, at any time, with any gun, I can kill anyone. And those things fight each other, and those parts of the community fight each other, right? Like, like Desmond in, in, is in here, and he's expressing an opinion that I respect, which is that if I play the game, and I get better at the game, and I get better gear... You know, in World of Warcraft, if you were a level 175 warrior with the best stuff and you went into a PvP zone and a literal brand new fresh account killed you, that would feel bad. That's that's not traditional game design. And then there we've also had people in the chat saying the exact opposite. This is going to be so great because more builds are going to be viable and you can take down chads and this. And I can also respect and understand that opinion. I'm glad I'm not in control of this because I'm not the one that started this identity crisis. That was BSG. And I don't know how to resolve it because if there is no re resolution. Yeah. Cause, cause if an end, like, yeah, I just don't, I don't know what, what is the point of progressing to get better armors? If those better armors are useless. Um, and, so, and, and, and like, I don't know, I'm not coming at it from either side. I'm saying like, that's, it's, it's going to, this, Identity crisis and this butting heads is only going to get worse with this change. So you talked about like complexity and how you like complexity in games, and and like I'm totally with you. Except, it's not just complexity for the sake of complexity. It's the complexity has to be meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> so, like to to pull a fucking Diablo example, just because it's it's yeah, on fresh. the top of my head, right? There's like a million different stats that you can have on chest armor. Yeah. Or a sword or whatever, right? There's a million options that you can you can have a, a plus to vulnerable damage, a plus to core skills, a plus to close damage, a critical strike damage, uh, damage to crowd control enemies, right? There, there's a million different things. And you have to make the decision between the the, the different kind of properties you want yeah. on an item and why it makes sense. And that is that's the kind of complexity that yeah, matters. I see what because you mean. you're using that sword to kill a hundred thousand mobs. Yeah. So the, the 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 complexity over these numbers and the stats and all of the intricate decisions that you're making over those things, they matter. When you have to do an expert level Sudoku <laughs> to yeah. you have a 2% chance of any of the things that you decided be relevant at all. Yeah. You might die to a scav grenade. Yeah. How 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 cool was it that you had the decision making process of okay, so now I'm looking at this Abrala, right? And there's one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's 13 armor slots. How many of those things do I want to put in armor? And what classes do I want to... Oh, I'm dead to a grenade. It didn't fucking matter. <laughs> yeah. Okay? There's 13 different armor slots. Do I want to put in level 3 in the... Oh, sorry. You got sniped by sniper scav in the head through your level 6. It didn't fucking matter. Yeah. The complexity is irrelevant. Yeah. 98% of the time. So, therefore, it's bad, useless, vapid, empty complexity. The I, complexity yeah. is only there to make the players go, well... I guess that's hardcore. I have no control over fucking anything. It's yeah. real life. You know, it, it it's the worst kind of complexity. Yeah. I understand what you mean. I do. I understand that perspective. And, and, and I, yeah. Cause it, it lasts one death. Yeah. And, and that death is, is almost, almost entirely out of your control. Yeah. So like the only thing I can see is if you if you fill up every single one of those armor slots, yeah. if it gives you a hundred more HP. Yeah. If you fill up yeah. all of those slots, like, well now, now I have a, a reason to fill up all of those. Oh, well, you get a bonus, a 25% bonus to each individual slot if both adjacent slots are the same armor class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now it's like, okay, well, now maybe there's a reason to it's put like complex, six in everything. But you and can... then I'm yeah. And then it's Fortnite and it's good, you know, and then it's going to take 72 shots to kill me. But at least now it's meaningful. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. You're not saying that that's what it needs to be. You're saying that's an example of using that complexity in a way that would then immediately show you the effect and the benefit of that complexity. Yeah, it would be relevant in your control yeah. 
and it, you would see a benefit, right? Yeah. So when someone's like, wear a seatbelt, do you, would you wear a, would you like, would you wear a seatbelt if there was a point zero 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 one percent chance that it increased your survival? And there was a point zero 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 seven percent chance that you like got decapitated but lived in a vegetative state your whole life. <laughs> Gotta love the complexity in that decision, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to drive anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun, yeah. right? It's just completely pointless decision making. For something that you have no control over that is so rare, how often is somebody going to say, okay, you know what? I was going to go yeah. class three, but instead I went class six in my armpit plate. Yeah. Boom, I got shot in my armpit plate. Hell yeah, boys. Yeah. I survived because I somehow knew that it was, you know, a 32 pen bullet that hit the, yeah. the class four and it saved me. Thank God I made that decision. Yeah. This complexity is so great and I feel so rewarded from it. <laughs> yeah. No, yep because we i already have these conversations right like i already i love i love poking the bear a little bit somebody will be like uh you know when someone says what's the best armor you know i like d diving into that conversation or when somebody says you know slicks are trash and and i like being like not not if somebody shoots you in the thorax with m61 or with bp right like you 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 survive there because you had that slick on but then somebody says why are you wearing that like that's useless well i'm like well no if it's it's or or I love going down that rabbit hole, but ex but you're exactly right. This just like 10 X's that where you put all those plates in and then somebody leg metas you because there's still no leg armor, right? Someone just magnum bucks you to the leg or rip rounds you to the leg. Then it didn't matter. Then nothing mattered. Your helmet, nothing, you know. And Did you so, ever play Gran Turismo back in the day? Yeah, a little bit. So Gran Turismo 3, one of my favorite games of all time. I never, ever spent any time messing with the, the fucking uh, fucking wheel camber yeah, yeah. gear rate unless i wanted to pull a wheelie with the pike's peak suzuki yeah unless i wanted to do a thousand miles an hour and pull a wheelie i wasn't touching the gear ratios i wasn't right yeah but that was a game where that those that complexity actually mattered because you could do a hundred races with yeah. that car imagine if imagine a game like Gran Turismo where it's like you can tune the gear ratios just how you want it and you can put the right the a particular compound of rubber on your tires and yeah. open oh, if you touch anything your car explodes and you have to start over again. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab whatever car is the yeah. best off the shelf yeah. and I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah. That and that that's what I feel like will end up happening is it'll just be armors you find if you find off a boss or off of this or that like it's got these cool things you'll run that but so I, I, my guess is that very few times will people buy a thing and then fill it with plates that they have to buy and then go into a raid if they kill a pmc or i kill a boss or something i'll repair the plates and i'll run it and hope that these things benefit me but I, because the system's completely inscrutable that's yeah. the problem you have no idea if putting that armor there that's going to give you a run yeah. speed penalty or an ergo penalty, is it worth the 15,000 rubles to put these plates in? I don't know. Yeah. So you just don't want to think about it because you get decision paralysis. Yeah. And, and, and decision paralysis is bad enough when it's hard to know the answer. Yeah. In Tarkov, there's no way to know the answer. Yeah. By design. By design, yeah. And you know what's so interesting? So people are going to do what's the easiest thing. They're going to buy. They're going to buy the fucking Untar armor yeah. because... It doesn't have plates and it provides the same like thing with the least amount of clicks and yeah. it's the most value and that'll be the meta and I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that like this complexity works. I'm not saying I want this in Tarkov. I don't. Please, God. But like this, this level of complexity works in a universe where every round from every single gun is every gun only has one round per caliber and it just does 30 pen and 35 damage. Like if, th if that was shrunk down... Then this complexity becomes ever more apparent because it's like, oh, I, I'm going to use this and this class, because instead of buffing health, it's the reverse, right? It's like, oh, this class, it's, I'm going to be able to take seven shots instead of three, but I want to be able to take seven shots here, but only two shots here. And there's no world where it's just like, I'm insta dead with a one shot to the KS23 of the legs, right? There's no world where it's just like insta, it's like headshots, 35 damage, headshots, still a headshot. But in that world, you all these... Class three armors would be valuable. Class four, class five, class six. It would all change that up. But because you have the overwhelming complexity that is how many ammos 
the overwhelming complexity now of how many armor plates and armor places. I once again, I don't hate the idea. People <laughs> think I hate the idea. I love the idea. I just don't know that we have the tools necessary to execute on the idea in a way that lets people be happier at the end of raids and not more sad at the end of raids. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and, and here's here's one last thing. The cherry on top. Tell me how we could know, how we could know that the system is working properly when they release it. Yeah. Good luck testing it. Yeah, there's just going to be... Luck, good luck knowing, uh, again, because there's a dozen bullets for a dozen calibers that can hit you in 30 different zones on your body... Some percentage of the time they can fragment. Yeah. Then there's the blacked out limb multipliers. There's blunt damage. Then there's the blunt damage. Then there's the penetrating through one limb, and then the damage reduction through that limb and the layer of armor, and then the armor damage, and then the blunt damage, and then it's going to hit another limb, and that other limb is going to also then go through yep. the armor on that limb, and then is it going to fragment there, or can it fragment beforehand? You're just going to see a kill screen at the end. Yep. And you're going to be confused by what you see. Yep. And you're going to say, why did I spend an extra 10 minutes thinking about what I thought was a cool decision yeah. about all these armor plates when the system's completely and utterly inscrutable? And if you, and testing it in offline, if you do offline with friends, there's no um, damage overview at the end. So you can't even test it in offline and then like see, oh, how did this break down? Because it just sends you right back to the menu. So now I would imagine that this is also a feature that will most likely come to the ETS. Um, so my lawyer has said that I can't confirm. Yeah, or I don't know. So like if recoil is coming, this is a big enough thing that they've been talking about. And once again, to be clear, this isn't my frustration with this or my concern with this isn't a surprise. I knew this was coming. And when they showed it, it is exactly what they described. It's not like I'm surprised like OMG BSG going in the wrong direction. A lot of people think that they've always planned on doing this. I just am concerned with it. And I, and I, my concern is that a lot of people that are super excited for it, it's a short sighted excitement that they'll be able to just like kill everyone faster not realizing that the players that are better than them will just adapt to the new system and kill them as fast as they're excited to kill them. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'll be able to drop a guy with a slick and an Alton in two shots now. It's like, well, here are two things. You'll never find anyone running slicks and Altons anymore because they're useless and they'll be using the same ammo you are. And if they're better than you, they're going to kill you. <laughs> so it's like now when you get the kill, you won't be rewarded. That's the other thing too, is if you're excited about this because now you're going to drop chads. If the meta is pack a shattered mask MP153, that's what the chads are going to be using. So when you down the chad, he's just most likely going to end up with the same gear you had on anyway. So the yeah, reward right now for killing who, that Chad won't be anything. Right now, there's people who don't wear armor because they think it does nothing. There's the 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 people who are so kind of new to Tarkov that they're like they're going to be wearing the like seventy percent three M armor, yeah, and like excited about it, not knowing that it, you know, yeah. not knowing that it's not going to protect them from the Taws scav, right? Yeah. Um, then there's the people who understand everything enough to know like the highest value thing is just like the 90% level four armor yeah. that they got off the last guy and that's good enough, right? Or there's the, and then there's the people who have infinite money and they can always run whatever they want. Yeah. And you know what we're going to have after this change? Exactly the same thing. Yeah. Maxed out six plates in every single thing, whatever. Yeah. The people who are, who are doing the, not min maxing they're just going with the highest value easiest thing yeah. people who don't wear armor and then the newbies who don't quite understand and they're going to be sitting there wondering oh i gotta i gotta go to the wiki i gotta watch a guide i'm so stressed out about hey streamer what's what should i can you tell me can you explain the armor and it's gonna be like there's no way to explain it there's no way. good luck there's no right answer yeah the only person who could tell us is chat gpt and chat gpt doesn't have the formulas yeah Maybe yeah. I should fucking train chat GPT on the goddamn ballistics formulas. Yep. Yep. Because that's the only way. There's just no way to know. There's no way. So there's going to be the illusion of choice, and it's just going to be more clicks and more work. And that's what makes me so frustrated. Yep. <laughs> so 
that's it. I know, I know the takeaway from that conversation is going to be people just being like, oh, they think it's dumb. Yeah, get hardcore. I'm pro brother. I hope it's good. I'm just concerned, man. Um, I'm just concerned. Uh, all right. We can rip through some of these other ones. Uh, vaulting is coming. They didn't show any more of that. Excited about that snow. Bro, blind fire, one-handed and two-handed blind fire. That's exciting to me just because the blind fire in the game currently is so useless. It's not a 90 degree angle. You can't throw grenades while blind fired anymore and you can't move while blind firing anymore. So it's just like it just never becomes a thing you want to do. They showed a video in April that the blind fire looked so much better uh, because it was actually like much more adaptive to the cover and it was much more at a 90 degree angle. Now we're seeing you're going to be able to one handed blind fire, which is kind of cool. I just think that's cool because it'll be cool to see if that's a usable thing because right now it's not a usable thing. Weapon bipods and mounting, which was on the other pod, which was on the other roadmap as well, being able to kind of like the separating weapon bipods and mounting ma makes me think that uh, being able to like rest your gun on cover or like the Call of Duty where you could like put it up against the wall type thing. I think that's going to be really cool. The BTR on streets is coming alongside that second or the third iteration of streets in that patch. Um, he mentioned new services, special services with Lightkeeper. So I don't know what that means. Um, that kind of, to me, makes me think that they are maybe moving away from him being a traitor which is what they called him for a really long time, where you would go buy things with him and that they're exploring other options. Services, I don't know what that means, but that doesn't read to me like traitor, like he's going to sell explosives like we all thought. My guesstimation, yeah. we've seen like actual renders of like proper and therapist and, and back in the day they were supposed to be put in the game. My guess is that none of the traitors are going to end up physicalized. Um, Lightkeeper is just going to be like an NPC you can interact with for some stuff if you want to. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Left shoulder shooting, shoulder swapping. Nikita said, he said, this is one of the things he's the most excited for. He got super hyped when he was talking about this. I'm super excited about this. I hope there's a way that they can take this. That's fun. And then there's a way that they can take this. That's really, peak better. really Left rough. Peak better. Well, I just like, I, it's just going to be fun to be able to take any peak. You know what I mean? Just like, I hope you can just swap quickly. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, I, I just think that's going to be sick. Um, then we get the RPD, the SCAR grenade launcher will finally fit on the SCAR, the SIG Spear, uh, and the VS, the VSK-94, which is like the VAL SMG. They've showed pictures of that before. Um, another boss, well, I'm assuming it's another streets boss because we said there, they said there's going to be a ton. This is interesting, bro. Achievements. They're adding achievements to the game, and they're adding... Uh, Oh, like somebody asked in the Q and A, like prestige, and he said he said it's planned. Actually, it's coming with the achievement update, so there will be some way to prestige. And he said something along the lines of being able to permanently increase your stash size a little bit with a prestige, which is like a great reason to prestige, right? Like that's not like a cosmetic or whatever. So very sparse details on that, but. That could be really cool. We've talked at length in the past. Like, it'd be cool to have an achievement of killed this many scavs or uh, I did this. With, I mastered this gun. So I got this achievement or I mastered this many guns. And because of that, I got this achievement and got this cool armband, like mastered 30 different weapons in Escape from Tarkov. That would be a really sick thing. It's not a quest. You don't have to do it. You don't have to require for Kappa, but it's something to do. You know what I mean? Like, that could be really awesome. So they didn't really give yeah, any information. But depending on what they do for rewards, like I know some people would just want the reward in and of itself. I think that's one of those things that even for those people, I, I have a feeling that you get diminishing returns after a while where yeah. it's like, you know, putting like content creators to the side. Like, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, I don't know how many people are going to want to like, that's going to keep them playing four months in because yeah. they have more achievements they're going to get unless they get you know like a track suit level exactly reward yeah. you know reward for doing you know all of these achievements or or, or whatever right like it'll be interesting to see what what yep. if anything 
they have for rewards other than there's a screen you go to where you see the list. Yeah. If it was medals on a wall in the hideout, even that, infinitely cooler, right? Yep, yep. Like, I remember the fucking bobbleheads. Like, collecting the bobbleheads yeah, in, Fallout. in Fallout. Just the fact that you could have, like, the physical things on the little shelf, yeah. and you could have, like, 20 shelves, and it was, like, something to do. Um, yeah, there's, there's ways they could go about it. The, the hideout would be a great way to marry, to, to tie in achievements to the game. We're not... Like, if you don't want every single achievement to be, like, a reward that, like, increases your stash size or gives you a cosmetic, if you want some of them to be there, but not every single one, the hideout would be such a cool way to, like, you know, the rest space changes when this happens or this changes. And, like, it's something to show for it. That would be cool. Um, then some of the more vague ones, balancing changes to the mechanics of armor, damage, and movement. So that's coming alongside the armor customization and reworked hitboxes. Alongside that is the balancing to changes of, of the mechanics of armor damage and movement. So and recoil. Yes, and recoil. So it's it's going to be a completely different That's game. What I'm saying, dude. In one patch, in one winter patch, we're getting balancing changes to damage armor movement. We're getting completely new armor hitboxes. We're getting a completely new re, uh, recoil rework. We're going to be able to shoot from left side peaks. We're going to be able to vault. And new new optics. We're going to be able to mount of, weapons. On top of. Very likely the same ballistics formulas and calculations. Yeah. Enjoy yourselves, kids. Yeah, so it's going to be... Have fun. It's going to be... This patch is going to be scoffed, dude. But I'm excited. Inscrutable is the word. I can't yeah. not... I can't... I can't use any other word other than inscrutable. It's the perfect word for what Escape from Tarkov is going to feel like yeah. between August and January. Inscrutable. Uh, leveling, skill, and weapon mastering rebalance. Very, very open to that. Excited about that. Sight reticle brightness adjustment. This is sick for night vision, being able to turn down the brightness of your optic when using night vision. Various technical and functional adjustments, and then more AI and behavioral improvements. He said that in between... The August patch and the December patch, we should get the Unity update and then also the new matchmaking system that they've been testing in the ETS. Hopefully that means we get into raids quicker. Um, and then that's it. That's uh, That takes us to the December wipe. Now, it's it's good. It's good they're getting Unity 2021 out about a month before 2024. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I had to. Yeah. I had to, when I look down and I see a year on, it's essentially a calendar, right? This is a roadmap. And I look down and I see 2021, and then I look up, I see December, and then I look down at the Windows calendar and I see 2023. And I just, the math, I, math's really good. I there. can't not, I can't not say it out loud. Yeah. Um, he said, uh, and then I took notes on just some things he said in between all these things. A bunch of technical updates will be coming between August and December. One of them will include Unity. Plenty of optimizations coming in both wipes uh, and in the tech updates in between. A big part of the optimizations to FPS will be in the December patch. Um, <laughs> in the Q&A, somebody asked about map-to-map -map travel. He said, yes, still planned. And then later somebody said open world question mark. And he said, this is what happened. He was like, open world? Ah, eh, there's open world in Skyrim. That was it. And then just moved on. And everybody was like, oh, okay. That's what he said. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So rip the dream, boys. R.I.P. the open Bro, my, world dream. My favorite episode of the podcast is yeah. still when we riffed on how, like the open world and yeah. how it could like how it would be like Daisy, and we went yeah. hard we on went so deep. Yeah, and he just go play Skyrim if that's what you want. Go play Skyrim now. Oh god, Skyrim oh, was probably god. built on a newer version of Unity. Hey, oh my um, god. Oh my god. Uh, I can't. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I can't. Yeah. No, I mean uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked him if he, somebody asked Nikita, do you play Tarkov? And he said yes. He's been playing a lot recently. Take that for what it's worth. Damn, that sucks, Nikita, because you've been playing the worst Tarkov. <laughs> yeah. 
You, um, you really should have played it back in 2018 when it was <laughs> fucking awesome. If only you played it then, you'd fucking have an idea. Yep. Um, <laughs> prestige planned. Um, he said something about elite weapon modifications that will have like specific bonuses to them and that will have like the ability to like track your stats so that if you kill somebody, you can like see like this person killed this many PMCs with this gun or something like that. You get it back in your protector case when you die? I doubt it. I don't know. Otherwise, it's fucking pointless. When your stat tracker lasts you one raid. Oh, yeah. I think it's more for other people, not for yourself. More for, like, you kill a guy and you're like, oh, this guy killed a bunch of people with this gun. I think it's less about you tracking stats and more about, like, other people. I don't know. He didn't expound on it much. Man, um, it's so fucking <laughs> backwards. Dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. Imagine if the stat tracker, like, knives you got in CSGO, how valuable they'd be if you couldn't see the knife, but only everybody yeah, you else had to could see it. sell it, and then you could see it. <laughs> he said the game will release on Steam. Um, which is interesting. He said that weapon paint is planned, which is awesome, because that's the first time we've got confirmation about that, and I think that's great. Um, I remember when, <laughs> when somebody sent me... When I was looking back through my conversations with him from like three years ago about, oh, when I was looking back to see about our conversations about the API, uh, like oh, yeah. around that same time, someone had sent me like privately, they basically like modded the game and they made a bunch of like skins, but like they had like, you know, like the ghillie fiber over yeah, and yeah. like the, the really cool, like, you know, what you would do if you like you know to spray yeah the, over the fucking the mesh yeah, you know yeah, with yeah. like the green and, and 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 i remember him being like yeah like send me more oh he was like he was i was like did you see that and he's like no send me more he was interested so i that's I, I always knew i always knew that he was interested in that yeah he, which makes sense that more it makes sense because it's a thing that's it's so <laughs> realistic like people do that so I mean, it, all he said is, like, painting weapons is playing. He didn't say skins. He didn't say how it's going to do it. He didn't say if we're going to do it or you're just going to be able to find variations. Like, we have no information other than he said somebody asked the question. And he said, yes, it's planned. Um, talked about the weapon rack, uh, removing the sharpening effect of painkillers. Um, oh, bro. He said um, somebody asked, will there ever be... Um, will there ever be a more secure containers than the ones we have? And he said, yes, in this patch, in the August patch, which is... I always thought that was going to be a... Uh, the Omicron one was shown way back in the day. 800 years ago. 800 years ago. You know, as soon as he said that, nice guy found the pick and tweeted it, like the Omicron case. Um, they need to put the pack, first of all, back in. It's still in. It's just, oh, mega rare. Like, I think Gingy found it, uh, this wipe. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fucking... Uh, yeah. Harlequin crest yeah. and Diablo. Basically. Um, but like um <laughs> dude. anyways. Um so so I think that's awesome. I think more secure containers, more things, like it's such it's such a great way to drop more like achievements and more like uh reason to like grind, especially if you don't have EOD, right? Which the expectation shouldn't be that everybody just bought the hundred and fifty dollar version of the game, right? Um um, they talked about once again EOD is getting removed eventually. Uh, he said events are going to be more frequent. Chronicles of Rizzi happening soon, which actually happened today. No new event, so there's not really a lot of noteworthy. But the Chronicles of Rizzi dropped today. Rizzi went met with Gluhar again. Nothing really happened. And they kissed. Yeah. Um, that's the fact. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I'd be way more. I would be totally into like a scav boss erotic fan fiction. Yeah. Then I think anything else then, in Tarkov. Yeah. And I'm not and I'm not even kidding. I would actually I'm I'm not even joking. It's out there. Ironically, I would I would get so much more enjoyment out of reading Rule thirty four or whatever it is, Tarkov. You'll find some some stuff. Crap or rule thirty four. I think I tweeted something yeah. about that a while back. Um Oh, and then he said that the that there's a big event happening towards the end of this wipe. He said there's a really special quest line that will grant you a really special bonus. So if they're engineering an end of wipe event that has a quest line that gives you a bonus, 
my imagination leads me to that bonus has to transfer over to the next wipe, right? Like, if if it's a pre-wipe event and you get a bonus, well, if, it's a bonus for the rest of the pre-wipe. Has to, you know, I I hope it's a T seven. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 oh my da, god, that was so brutal. T seven. Brutal, dude. Um, and then he touched on arena very briefly. He said that they they dropped a video. They dropped another little arena video. Apparently, they had a tournament, a company wide tournament, like an in house, like they're trying to test the, the thing. And so they did like a tournament with everybody. They showed a little video about that. He said it's soon. He said it's really close. And he said beta will happen sometime in the fall. It's beta. Yeah, he said closed beta will happen for everybody in the fall. So I think it just means wait closed for everybody. Yes, exactly. But I think that means like. Tarkov's a closed beta in the sense that you have to pay to get access to it. So I think it's like that. You'll have to buy Arena, but it will launch in beta. Um, and uh, I mean, dude, he seemed like he kept harping on the fact he was like, Arena is done. It is ready. We just want to make sure it is perfect. We want to make sure it is perfect. So we're so Bro, I know that, I know either. he's setting himself up, but that's what I would have wanted. Right. Like, I really want them to to hound in on it i really want them to so i don't know man i don't you know you know the, here's where someone is going to edit together the clip you know six months from now or whatever where you just said the thing and then i laugh and then they're going to edit in the clip where jesse's like oh i'm so pumped and he launches you yeah see the yeah splash screen and it's like unity 2021 is yeah. fucking crashed and sure. unrecoverable blue screen and then jesse looks into the camera Whoever is going to do the editing, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. So it's coming in the fall. He said it's really good and really close. And he kept using eSport and CyberSport and that they're trying to build in a tons of functionality. BSG Sport. BSG Sport. BF it's G Sport. BFT Sport. It's new sport it's called BFT Sport. It's BSG Sport. It's not any sport. Take my money. So I don't know, man. Um, it is interesting to consider though, the potential really dope hype train that will happen of if this wipe comes and is good and is fun and between these wipes somewhere in October, November, we get arena and then in December, January, we get another patch like that could be dope. That could just be like a dope constant IV stream of like stuff to do and Tarkov related stuff to do. So I'm not saying that it's going to work out that way. There's a very real possibility we get this wipe in September, not August. The next wipe gets pushed to June of next year and Arena gets delayed another year. But I'm just saying that according to that calendar they just laid out, that would be a really sick six months for a Tarkov fan. I don't know. Um, and then the only other thing that happened we're already two hours and 60 minutes in, so I don't want to get too deep into it. But you remember way back in the day when they did the, uh, they did like leaderboards where you could like see, they did like a season of like the leaderboards. Yeah, they're doing that again. And it has caused drama. Um, yeah. It, apparently the winners or everybody in the top 10 of all the leaderboard things get get a reward of two extra rows on their stash permanently forever every single wipe you're going to be able to like activate it and get like so there's an actual real reward to it you get two extra rows in your stash two extra rows i These know are the people that have like literal fucking thick cases filling their yeah. stash um but uh oh my God. but everybody but they did it in a really weird way where like okay so like they only tracked stats from when the leaderboard went live so like the guy at the top of survival rate was just a guy who played a factory raid got out saw he was number one in the world because he had 100 percent survival rate and just stopped touching his account like it didn't take your survival rate for the whole wipe it was just like i played a raid I that's so weird it's almost like they didn't fucking look past their goddamn elbow yeah and then they, um oh. And, and so, I don't know. And, th and then, like, everybody was just... Basically, everybody thinks everybody on all of the leaderboards are cheaters. I think there's actually good reason to believe that some of them are cheaters because you're like, what the hell? Um, I think right now, the guy with the number one... Literally on the leaderboard, the guy with the number one spot has a 114% survival rate. Like, it's just a joke. Like, I, how? 
I don't know. Um, the the one the one one that was like valid and valuable, like the one that everybody was going for, was PMC kills. Because like, you just keep grinding it, keep grinding it, keep grinding it. You just keep going in the factory with your four friends. Yes. Over see, and over. See and that over again. is, unfortunately, everybody was grinding that Desmond Tiggs, Hyper Rat Chief. And a few other were like, every, basically, whoever was live would be in the number one spot. Um, and then they found out that um, your teammates count as kills. And so a few of them just kind of were like, well, it's just like cheesable now. You know what I mean? You could just go in with a four other dudes and just kill them all and leave and kind of farm that. So, and then you had a whole bunch of drama with people taking viewer kits to do it and like some people were like shouldn't be taking viewer kits and everybody was getting all dramatic about that and then when people realized that not uh, not only are you taking viewer kits but if you're taking a viewer kit you get a free kill because your teammate that you spawned in with counts as a kill man i don't i don't miss I know. this fucking shit dude oh i my God. i am staying as far as humanly possible away from all leaderboard related stuff. I don't care. It is scuffed. I'm in no way defending BSG as a result of it. I'm just saying like, I'm staying away from the drama. I'm staying away from it. I have absolutely no desire to even attempt to get anywhere close to those leaderboards. I'm just setting that aside as if it did not happen. It does not exist. That is gone. Bye bye. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. For the last 45 minutes, I've been distracted. Since the last time we said hot dog fingers, all I've been thinking about is how much I want to eat a hot dog, and I can't for another five weeks. Brother. Hold on. Let me show you something. I bought this on my subathon. Mm -hmm. I was, it was a thing where, like, chat gets to spend a hundred hundred dollars on Amazon and one of the things they voted on was the the slot dog. It's a metal grate that cuts slits into your hot dog so that your condiments ooze into the center. Have I used it? Absolutely. Not. Solving solving problems that we solving, didn't know we had. Solving problems, yep. The slot dog. Bro, you just all you do is you put the you you just put the condiments under the hot dog. Nah, dude, you press the hot dog into the slot dog, you cook it, and it all cooks up, and all the edges get crispy. Then you put your condiments on and it. Yep. I. As dog. stupid as that is, it's still, my mouth is watering. It still makes you want a hot dog. <laughs> but yeah, and, and given the fact that when I look at the list of things that I'm allowed to eat for the next five mm. weeks, the third thing on the list is pureed pasta, then I. I'm, I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Yikers, bro. I don't even know, dude. Damn. I don't even, do I even try that? No. Well, maybe. Is it's you, like one of those things like I, I, you couldn't know. And it's your one excuse to not be like a maniac for trying it, right? You know what I think? It might actually be good. And this is like, um, one of the most like ghetto meals I ever had as a kid, but egg <laughs> noodles with ketchup I are actually unbelievable for some reason like I, I won't have ketchup on like ziti that's like yeah yeah but yeah for some reason egg noodles with ketchup actually tastes good i can and i, I can have see a that. feeling that like egg noodles with a with a little bit of ketchup you put too much ketchup it's going to be fucking disgusting a little bit of ketchup in the blender i don't know dude i'm trying i listen i'm so fucking bro i had mashed potatoes listen. And I was rock hard for mashed potatoes today. That's how yeah. desperate I am right now with food. I need I would something. try it if I would try it. You know, you got to. I, I'm a texture guy, so something blended up is is not going to work for me. But oh, man, it could be right. good. What do you eat that with? A spoon? Yes. Like, but oh. not, definitely not a straw. Definitely not a straw. Oh. You got to go spoon. I need, I need something. I'm actually, like, fucking starving yeah. right now. Well, that that was that was it. That was everything. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a big, big Tarkov. So overall, so 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 that's the thing. So right, like there's things like the recoil rework. That's like, ugh. there's things like the uh, armor hitbox. That's just like, oh, how is that going to work? The leaderboard. 
scuffed. By and large, however, I'm super excited. They showed video of tons of things. They seemed super confident. We now know when the patch is. It's going to be August for anybody wondering. I mean, probably late August, but whatever. It's going to be August. I like that they split up the patches into split up 0.14 into like a quality of life wipe uh, and then a new mechanic wipe. We're going to get arena sometime this year. He like basically promised that we were going to get it this year. So call it whatever, right? I'm huffing copium X, Y, Z. In my opinion, the overall, the overall vibe, even through the recoil, like even people that were like absolutely dumpstering the recoil on Twitter were also like, that was a pretty good podcast. So like, they're pushing the ball. They're rolling it towards finishing the game or at least getting all these mechanics in. Super excited for the streets expansions uh, and that. So yeah, so next few weeks, we'll probably see some events ramp up, some more Chronicles of Rishi stuff. We're going to get a wipe sometime in August um, and we'll see. But uh, so yeah, so the podcast was good. We haven't had an event in like forever, so I imagine we'll get some events soon. So yep. I'll have to tell you about all the Diablo drama next week. Oh, I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Big, massive 1.1 patch. Came oh. Out the season started. And, well, uh, you know, I, I I took it as an interesting... When I when I hopped in, you were playing chess, not Diablo. So... Does that... Well, yeah, that was only because it was like 8.30. The game, oh, the game okay. crashed. It was or like 5.30, and I'm like, I guess I'll just play chess. Until Jesse hops in. Okay, yeah. okay. I thought I was oh, like... Oh, no, I'm, uh -oh. I'm loving fucking Diablo. Okay. Dog. Okay. It's great. Well, uh, yes, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that next time. But um, so, yeah, thank you guys for hanging. We'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this episode. Uh, What day is it? It's Saturday. This will be live Monday morning still, but I just don't know what day of the week it is. Um, But, Jeff, thank you guys so much for hanging, and we'll definitely see you all on the next one. Peace.